Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Harry Potter in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Harry Potter cinematic universe. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Andy Cortez. Hey, Tim. Hey, at Tim Geddes. I am at Maximum Cortez. Kevin Coelho. I'm tired. And Nick Scarpino. Avada Kedavra. No, it's the killing. I hate these jackets. Is yeah. it so noisy? No, these Is medium, the these medium sized jackets. They they bunch up up top here, and I have to like pull them down. You have a thick neck, bro. Dude. You do have a thick neck. Thick neck. Thick. You got that neck. thick neck. Harry oh, you Potter. Fine. <laughs> no, you <laughs> got, that was it's closer. Just, that was closer. <laughs> Harry. You, it just you're too in your lips. Expelliarmus. It's pretty close. Mr. Potter. Mine's I better. S- okay. And that's not saying much. Uh, we do this show usually every Tuesday on twitch.tv slash games at 11 a.m. But you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunny or roosterteeth.com as a video. But you can also get it as a podcast. Just search your favorite podcast service for uh, Kind of Funny Reviews. Um, every movie ranked and reviewed. We also renamed it that. So anything it's for SEO, you can find it <laughs> however you would like to. Um, but it changes the whole fabric of the show, though, Tim. It does. Yeah, it does, man. Like it really <laughs> this does. show is just totally different now. It's, it's, you know, you know, you know. You, you should guys support it, it either way you can. Um, but please give us the thumbs up. Give us the five stars. Give us the ten out of tens. Give us all the good things. Um, today, I want to shout out Patreon producer David Mintel. Mind Mind show me a trick. Show me a trick. Because you can also go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to get this show ad free or write in later for the haiku in review. What? Oh, uh, what? What? Nick? No, that's what it is. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, so today we're talking what? about Harry Potter. <laughs> never said that in the song. I said it in my head. Okay. I always, I've always heard it in his head. That's <laughs> Harry weird. Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, the fourth movie, fourth book of Harry Potter. Um, released on November 18th, 2005. Directed by Mike Newell who didn't have much that I was like, that's interesting, mm-hmm. except for Prince of Persia. Yeah, there you go. Oh, they were like, you good? knocked it out of the park. No. I mean, that came later. The Prince, Prince of Persia was afterward? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Man, that was a <laughs> weird Was the Prince movie. of Persia like 2010? I yeah, could have well, sworn it was it before that. Oh, no, what? Prince of Persia was like 07. Prince I'll of look. Persia. 2010. 2010. The Sands of Time. That's what I said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> was it, it any is. good? Um, no. Prince of Persia, the movie? Yeah. Was not pretty good. No. It was no. Jake Gyllenhaal as the Prince of Persia. I'm yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. And yeah. Gemma Arterton. Stop. You got to stop doing that. You got to stop Bata. talking about it. Mr. Just either Bata. take it off or accept it. it. I want to sit on the box. There's no way. You're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it looks it's a budget of $150 million And in terms of box office. That's like nothing. All of these have been around there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah back then, you see, I guess well, the, co- the costumes are all really years small. ago. Huh? So, well, you have to assume the costume budget half as much as adult movies. They just paid magicians oh, to like okay. do their special tiny. effects or whatever. Sorry. Magicians. Tiny people. Uh, box office. Goblet of Fire enjoyed an immensely successful run at the box office, earning $897 million worldwide, which yeah. made it the highest grossing film of 2005 and the eighth highest grossing film of all time at that time. <laughs> Things have changed Got it. dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Fast and Furious. Um, and the sixth highest grossing film in the Harry Potter series. Really? That's not that impressive. That's, That's not, not that impressive, impressive at all. all. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's the sixth highest grossing film in the Harry Potter series? Wow, they yeah. kept making a lot of movie, uh, money, huh? Guess so. Yeah. And a runtime of two hours and 37 minutes. Uh, before we get into all the plot, and as always, we are avoiding future spoilers. Uh, what did we think about this movie? I would like to start. Go for it. This is the first good movie. This is absolutely the Rogue Nation. No, sorry, not Rogue Nation. Rogue Ghost Nation. Protocol of this of this franchise. All movie, of a sudden, right? I'm like, we're getting to a good place, baby. I'm lo- you didn't like it? What? Azkaban is better than this, man. Oh, no. you're so dumb. Like, it's like, so, like not so even dumb. a chance. <laughs> like I was, I, I I I thought this movie was serviceable. I think at the end of the day, this will be in like the bottom two or three. What? I just. I don't know. I like how you looked at me for confirmation on that. And Wait, I gave you nothing back. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I just yeah, I think Azkaban was like just a lot more entertaining than this. I I felt like this movie just it just took too long in certain spaces where I just wanted to get to the end and find out the thing that happens. Like I I don't know, pacing felt off to me. Um it just, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it as much as Azkaban. I can't really quite put my finger on it. We had no Dursley bullshit. We start this movie you off. You just love it because there's real, no Dursley bullshit. I mean, that definitely, Thank definitely helps. God. Let's start. Let's already have a cool storyline going. Yeah. Loved the intrigue of the villains. 
bad guys that we've seen before coming back. What yeah. are they up to? World totally World. down for that. The Triwizard Tournament, nothing cooler than tournaments, period. Yeah. It's gym leaders in Pokemon. It's what it's everything you want. It's season three mm-hmm. of Ruby. It's like it's the hype. It's what you fucking need. And then boom, the last twenty minutes. I'm like, oh, this is why people like Harry Potter. Uh, oh, there's actually that, some shit. That, that's there's one stakes. That's one thing I will say. The last twenty minutes of this movie are where I finally found myself really enjoying it. I don't want to say that like I enjoy kids getting killed, but I I enjoy Certain those kids. stakes and I love how I love how dark it gets and I love how how shit really gets real where, you know, up to this point we're joking about like how this shit seems so dangerous and how dare they like now a lot of these a kids just kid. and now mm-hmm. there's like an actual dead kid and it matters and you feel that emotion, you feel how sad it gets and how just fucked up all this seems. And it wasn't until the last like I'd say more than 20 minutes. I'd say maybe the last 30 or so yeah. uh, that I that I definitely enjoyed. But the rest of it, I just kind of wasn't too into. I think that this movie addressed so many of my concerns from the other movies directly and head on where it would be these lighthearted stuff, but then they would address it with some dark shit, but then they would have that stuff next to each other and it actually felt appropriate. Like the end scene where it's like still that stupid ass like, Music playing the do, do 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 do. It's terrifying. Do, 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 do. But like, the motherfucker's dead. Yeah, you it's know, it's really like that. Up. It's like, oh my god! Finally, this is starting to feel like there's. A, it's a real world where dark shit could happen. But on top of that. The, just playing on our expectations. Like, Azkaban, it's like, oh, is the dark arts teacher going to be bad? Oh, no, the twist is he's good. It's like, that's where the extent of that mm-hmm. line. Whereas this one, it was like, oh, okay, I guess the dark arts teacher's bad again. Oh, no, he's not. He's fucking down in the little chest Fucked thing. Out, it's right? like they immediately kept making me happy with uh, with surprises and yeah. twists that I didn't see coming, including the... Um, Harry, like, how do you get his name in there? And it's like, oh, no shit, Harry's name's gonna get called because he's Harry Potter, and, like, they, they do not care about him at all getting in trouble or getting in these death waiting for death sequences, and then the next scene is Dumbledore and all of them being like, yo, Fucking what the fuck pissed. happened? How'd your name get in there? Yeah. I'm like, okay. Hell yeah. Like, they grill him on it, too. There's, I mean, and this movie has a, a definite intensity. I, I will say this, like, I, I was, I went in expecting to not like this as much as Azkaban, and I, I think they did a really, really good job of structurally having this movie be tight. There's no, there's, there's one little point at the very end of the movie where Dumbledore has to explain away just a couple of the things, but it's not even that. It's more just kind of clarifying what happened with the wands and all that stuff. Versus the movie, pro, like Azkaban, they literally have to sit there and be like, okay, all the shit we couldn't fit into the movie. Here's what we're. Here's what I'm going to tell you about. So I, I love the job they did in this. I like how everything was set up and very, very well supported and feels at the very, very end when uh, Moody or fake Moody rather is like grabbing his arm and like twisting the blood out of it and asking if he saw the dark light. Like you when, when, you, when I first read that and then you, or rather if you first see it in the movie theater, you're like, what is going on here? Who is this person? What I mean, you probably smart enough to pick up on the, the little tongue thing that he does. Uh, but I certainly wasn't. I was like, well, I, I didn't, you know. I don't know if they ever even clarified that in the book. Um, so I just I like that this is really the first one structurally that feels you get to the third act and you're like, there's payoff in this, yeah. which is great. Um, I was pleasantly surprised how much I enjoyed this one, but you know they're they're all I think they're all great movies. So I you know I'm jaded. I love this one. This is the one that, that like the kids are all they seem like now they're a bit older and like the stakes are real real as shit. Like where it's like at the end of this one someone dies and. Like the whole thing is like you're right, like tournaments and stuff like that. That makes it so much cooler because you get to see them doing crazy magic and stuff. But uh, yeah, I love this movie so much. This is also the first one where you really start to see the the bigger, wider spreading magical community as well. Like we get the Quidditch World Cup, which is cool. So you see that every like enormous every type of culture has a team potentially that they can come rap. Uh, you get. Type. This is the really really cool part uh, that I love when I was reading the books. So I was like, wait, there's other schools. Like I'm sure they had made yep. mention to them, but it didn't. It didn't really occur to me that there were other institutes and other schools that were there to teach wizards, witches, and wizards how to be witches and wizards. So it was really cool to see like Durmstrag come in and and uh, the what, the bow batons oh, oh, come, bow batons come in and all that stuff. You're like, whoa, I want to go. And then it starts. It starts making you wonder. You start to wonder. You're like, is there an American school? What would it be called? Where would they be? Where and they, they, they dropped Aurors for the first time. They did. I was Aurors like, oh shit, really, here we go. Yeah, Aurors are really focused on this. Moody, of course, being one of the most uh, historic Aurors of all time, who lost his leg and his eye in fights, and that shit took something out of him, which is they even make mention of that, too, in the, when, when they're going through the Pensieve memory, where they talk about the first or the second name that uh, he mentions. He's like, I know that motherfucker. He took a piece of me. Yeah. But, like, I took the rest of him. <laughs> the, cool. the only real, like, criticisms I have of the movie, I thought the action scenes weren't 
thrilling. Like they weren't that exciting, like the Harry with the dragon and stuff. It was just kind of like mm. pretty pedestrian choreography. Um, and the Ron turning on Harry was like, it was clear. It's like, oh, I'm in the book. This must have been more. Dude, explained. in the book, it was so, it was like six months of him being a dick. Cause it was just kind of like God, out of nowhere. Sucks. It's like, yo, dude, you've seen Harry kind of like get fucked over a lot, yeah. and like random things happen to him. Like, why would you so quickly assume he's doing this for fame? He's it was boy. an annoying part in the book too. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah it it was, was, you it were was, like, why is she writing this? They, they, they flesh it. Conflict. They flesh it out a little more because like they don't like back in Sorcerer's Stone when he looks in the uh, mirror, he sees like all of these things that he's done. He is the youngest son in that family and all of his older brothers have like great success. Like the twins are funny and they're goofy and whatnot. Like Bill is, uh, he's just had a lot of successful brothers. So just like, it's like this weird complex of his where he hates constantly being overshadowed and he's like in this one, he's like definitely tired of it. And then it's again, like it is in the, the movie. Once he sees like what Harry's up against in the first task, he's like, yeah, I was an idiot. I'm sorry. Like, Someone's yeah. trying to. It's like in the movies you. when the nerdy kid, like you know, starts to become friends with like the quarterback, and then like, and the nerdy kid's like, "Well, you're not gonna invite me." Like, I see how it is, bro. Like, that's yeah. fucked up, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing was just the, the weird baby Voldemort thing. Baby V. <laughs> I, I just I feel like they could have one of my favorite that. memes. Built, built that up a little bit more not in the other good. movies or like something because it was just kind of it was just there. I <laughs> and, like it. didn't expect it. <laughs> there's there's one like scene in the movie where I'm like, why does this look so dumb? It's when they toss him into the cauldron <laughs> and it's a punching of the cauldron that makes the cauldron seem huge and then just like a really normal size like. It just that scene always looks wrong to me. It, it looks, whenever they toss him in, I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it's like did in, he suddenly become full size? Yeah, it's like in, it reminds me in TV shows where, <laughs> where where they they are purposely like they knock somebody off a building and they cut to like an obvious just like dummy falling down. Yeah, like that's yeah, what it kind of looked yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like this sort of like but, lifeless thing that has no. Even though he is kind of that way, but but just dude, looks fake. How fucking cool is it when he's reborn? It's the coolest thing. Yeah, fucking possible. I definitely, can't imagine. Definitely oh, much cooler than like, rubber faced fucking pick up, pick up dummy. Ron in underwater. Oh that looks yeah, cool. that looks real bad. I hated the way that looked. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Ray Fiennes, who I think Fucking when they announced he was it. when they announced that he was going to be cast as Voldemort in the in this movie. I was like, yep, that's mm-hmm. fucking yep. awesome. He's a great actor. That's, he's so, he's good. so scary when he when he's like. Pick up your one. Well, like, let, let's do a duel like they do in school. And it's like, oh shit, this guy's no, crazy. Like, the part that freaks me out was when he, when he gets close to Harry. He's like, I can touch you now. And oh Harry starts gosh. screaming because it's because the pain of him being close. And he kind of screams with him like, oh, it's yeah. fucked up. Dude, oh, it reminds me of when he was in uh, that uh, that sequel, The Silence of the Lambs, when he played like the fucked up dragon killer, the red dragon. Oh, There's one thing. I, so uh, one thing I don't like about the performance, so and it's that. like it's, it's purposely done this way, so it is. It's like an obvious choice. Like a lot of his mannerisms, I don't oh. like. He. he he, he we kind of runs around like a child. We start to we start to see a lot of like uh, that goofy like the goofiness that isn't really intended. It re- isn't really intentional later on, but like the way he kind of like moves around oh, like see, he doesn't I, I love yeah, his I just, like it's it. really it's, bizarre. It's such an exaggerated like he you get the feeling that he thinks he's a fucking god and now he's come ego, back yeah. and for the last like what 13 years I mean years, Dumbledore still calls him lord like <laughs> You would think that, I mean, like, you think that Dumbledore name. would just call him, like, fucking I mean, Elf Voldemort. Cool. <laughs> no, I mean, Dumbledore should call him, uh... Riddle. Riddle, yeah. But, but anyways... At the end, he's like, Lord Voldemort's back, whatever. Um... Well, I mean, that's also people know him from. That. I wish they ended the weird. movie there, but also like I, know, I, I, I liked everything that we got after. Imagine just I actually black, thought, cut to black. That's my thing. Is like oh. if you hear the stupid music playing and then you see the uh, Edward Cullen dead, and then it's just Dumbledore being like, Lord Voldemort's back, and they just. Credits. Dude, oh, oh, that would have been sick as fuck. No, dude, we gotta find Moody, bro. Nah, that would have been the Moody sick. Stuff that that no, way. but yeah. I love the Moody stuff. Um, it was great. Moody stuff's great too, because it's like, wow. Well, that's I also didn't like the uh, the duel scene that you know the the fucking um, <laughs> the Wait. the cell slash Gohan. With Goku over, oh, you never watched Dragon Ball Z. Fuck. What are you talking about? When, I, when Voldemort, when the wand, when they're, when yeah. they're dueling Dude, or whatever. Like no, I just, I hated, I hated, I hated a, a Harry Potter stance. He was just like, like his. Uh, it's really hard to see, but get in there. You want me to do it with you? Here, I'll do Sorry. Voldemort. I'll do Voldemort. His legs are just like, like I, 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 Harry, like fucking get in there. But his legs are just like, 
<laughs> like he look, it, it looks so bizarre. He's a little dumb shit now. I'm, I'm hoping he comes back more powerful than ever before. That scene was fucking awesome. That scene was so well. fucking I'm cool. just like, oh my god. So I imagine mean. that. Imagine Dragon Ball Z and Gohan is fighting Cell and the fate of the world is at, is, is, it's about to all end. And then you just see fucking Goku appear above Gohan's shoulder and he's like, Gohan, now's your chance, Gohan. And he's like doing it. And then That's like really fucking good. Vegeta comes out of nowhere, hits Cell, and Cell like gets distracted. And then Go, uh, Goku just goes, Gohan, no! And then fucking Gohan just fight. Oh my god, dude! Just tears of crying, I mean, man. I mean, wasn't it, wasn't so Vegeta dead at that point? What's your was wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, Vegeta was in the sky. Vegeta was all fucked up. Mm. But then he just uses it like his last blast to distract yeah. Cell. Cell turn around. Huh? So fucking oh, so tired. Oh, the scene in the book was great, but it's one of those things. There's a couple scenes in the Good movies yell, the that you. really, really, really do justice to the scenes in the book. There's this one, and we won't talk about the next one that's coming up in the next movie. But this scene when the wands meet and it starts spitting out white hot lava. Onto the ground, so I'm like, fucking cool. fuck me. Like, you get the feeling like, this is the first time you actually get the feeling that Harry is a powerful wizard. Up until this point, you're like, has his, has he just lucked out with everything? But, like, he had his friends with him. But this is the first time, like, he squares off against Lord motherfucking Voldemort and actually holds his own for a second. Impossible. Yeah, th here's the thing. Like, and then his parents have to come help him. He's again. not really a powerful wizard. It's just a lot. It's all fate. It's all fate. Like, the only reason... Uh, they don't explain Look, this till later. Barrett, Ezekiel yeah. Midoriya wasn't born with a cork, but he fucking gained it, bro. And yeah. that's what Harry's doing, man. That's what Harry's fucking showing oh, man, everybody. That's dude. that scene where he's like, come out, Harry. Cork? I want to see the whites in your eyes cork. when I kill you. I want to see like the light drain from your eyes. And Harry just goes, Children! fuck it. There Jesus. It we just started. Fuck. <laughs> Oh God, I fucking I, I, I hate this part. <laughs> so shrill. I hate this part so much. <laughs> We just started. Hello, Nick. Oh. Good to see you, Nick. Good, good to see you. Okay, I'm getting kisses from him. That's great. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's me, Professor McGonagall, and I come with terrible news. Oh, no. What's the news, McGonagall? I'm laughing, though. I'm a witch. Which is fine. I'm everything, a buddy. witch. <laughs> I never noticed how thick your <laughs> wand is. Damn, it's so thick. <laughs> Spit it out! <laughs> Let him get there. Let him get there. I've come this week to only deduct points. I am taking okay. 15 points from Rebecca. What? Why? You might ask why. Uh, he Nicholas. You have done nothing wrong if in I, the eyes of Raven if I can, Claw, if, the house, yes, son. <laughs> if, I, if, I can, if I can guess why you're taking points away from us, can you give us the points back? Sure. Is it because Andy stupidly brought in Dragon Ball Z into the conversation? Ah, uh, you were very close. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't lift up your shirt, please. Let <laughs> me, as the world's greatest magician, yep. Professor McGonagall, Wizard. perform a trick. Oh. Ravenclaw will be losing 15 points. Please pull down your shirt. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, it's in there. It's really in there. That's a, that's a nice new ham. Because they are a house of no moral fiber. Uh -huh. Andy Cortez, what did you have for lunch? Uh, in and out. And all he does on Twitter is talk shit about in and out. Yeah. But here he is eating it. Let me bring you back to July 17, 2017. Yeah. Our in and out fries, actual cardboard. January 19th, in and out fries are my least favorite thing on this planet. August 29th, 2018, also their fries are trash. They are. They are, though. Why would you eat it? If a dog food truck rolled over outside, would you go eat that, you yeah. fucking little Slytherin bitch? I didn't, I didn't order really fries. Long. No, it's funny you say that. On April 20th, 2018, yeah. a man yeah, yeah. tweeted you named Cody and said, Quick! <laughs> <laughs> Cody! <laughs> and said, I'm a boy! <laughs> The internet's too powerful. It's too powerful. <laughs> Quick! About to go to Whataburger first time, what should I get? You quoted and said, help this man! And then DexDad82 said, get nothing, leave and go to P. Terry's or in and out You then tweeted, and then eat whatever is in their toilets because it's better than anything at P. Terry's or in and out You ate in and out today! <laughs> You need to stand for something or fall for everything! You fucked this, I, I talk shit about the fries all the time! And then the burgers and the 
toilets himself. I stand on the mountain of St. Hogwarts minus 50 points from Ravenclaw. Yep. Nick, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you, Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall, everybody. Yes, yes. There she is. There she goes. <laughs> oh my God! There's a whole Jesus. lot of women. When he it, was yelling, it was literally ringing. I, yeah, I my know. left ringing. ear hurts. I don't think yeah. I've ever heard a human being produce that sound. It's, it's great. What's amazing is he kept it up for a solid forty-five minutes. Oh my God! Oh wow! That was great. Ah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Not a fry suck. Though. Um. I don't, yeah, they're I don't not know good. Where, they're where not we good. Were. We were talking about Dragon Ball Z, and that was a cool scene. I think we were just ready to go into the we're just, pool. Yeah. Greg's not here, but worry not. Nick will tell us the plot. Soon we must all face the choice between what is right and what Jesus. is easy. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, Boom, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire starts in a very untraditional way on some dope-ass skulls. That's Thank right, Tim. God. With a Z. Uh, Speaking not, of Zs, real quick, I yeah. got some serious facts for you. you Chamber of Secrets been, been renamed Serious Facts with a Z. It's like Serious Blacks. Black. Ah, oh, I see what you're saying. There you go. Uh, Goblet of Fire was the first film in the series to receive a PG-13 rating mm. by the MPAA for sequences of fantasy violence and frightening images like skulls. So that's why. Dang. And that was and from the beginning here. Nagidi. So remember, I get a lot of these facts from Fascinate.com, and I enjoy whoever writes them. <laughs> Uh, this is the first movie to not feature the Dursleys. Thank fucking God. Uh, this is because the family that played the Dursleys demanded more money, forgetting that they're the Dursleys and not the cast of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's editorializing Man. a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. Is it one family? Are they an actual family? No. No, no, they're just the actors. No, yeah. I mean, but the idea of them collectively being like, you know yeah. what? Like if we collectively bargain, yeah, my son money. wants more money. <laughs> like, I'm not your son. <laughs> we just play that and, in the show. And then for WB to just be like, Fuck you, yeah. we're writing you out. And then the last random thing that's like overall movie stuff is Mike Newell received a million dollars for directing the film. Wow. By comparison, Chris Columbus, director of the first Harry Potter film, made 10 million and a percentage of the gross. Whoa. Newell needs a better agent. Jesus <laughs> Christ. God, Chris. uh, Tim, Heck. one more thing. They actually yeah. considered making this uh, movie two, two parts. Two movies. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then the director of the third one was like, don't do that. It's stupid. <laughs> it's true. So we're at the skulls, Nick. We are at the skulls, and a gigantic anaconda snake comes out of one of them and slithers by Thomas Riddle's grave, who, you gotta imagine this guy wasn't that nice of a guy to get a gravestone that is literally the Grim Reaper, but I digress. I feel like that's, a, like, they bought it for the family, because there's several it's names a on there. yeah. So they probably got a deal on it, and it looks cool. They were like, it's really ominous, but we're not going to come back to Home Depot. You know what? Just buy it. Just buy it, and we'll pull it out there. Uh, that's right. It's a family grave plot. Uh, we see, we pull out, and we see a gigantic mansion, and then a little uh, groundskeeper <clears throat> uh, hut right next to it, similar to Hagrid's, but a lot more modern. Of course, there's an old man making tea, looks over, sees a light on in the mansion, and is like, damn kids, I'm gonna go get, no weapons or anything. If these kids were like hooligans, they could easily take this old man, but he is, he's really a man that Kevin fought in the war. You see what I'm saying? Made a stuff that we couldn't even imagine. He goes in there with just his lamp and his guts, and, and boy does he fucking kids. die fast, Yeah, because he comes upon a scene that unfortunately no muggle could possibly understand. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Baby V. Baby Voldemort with his cute little baby arm. Do you think arms. he saw the baby arm? I saw the baby arm. You see it a little bit. He goes, ah. He makes Wormtail kiss the ring a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Wormtail's there. And another gentleman there who we'll just call Barty Crouch Jr. Because you're not really supposed to know who he is. But we see him. So, And it's David Tennant. So we all know who he is. Uh, cool so, hair. David so Tennant there. will always yeah. have the, like a great Good head of hair. hair. And yeah. uh, the old man's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. But Voldemort does because he can see through walls. And he just goes, there's the groundskeeper's outside. No, the snake tells him. Oh, Nagini, that's right. Nagini's like. Nagini slipped his by. And he's like, wait, what? And then he's like, as, 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 as. and he's like, outside. Yeah, that's right. This is good. I really like. like I, I, welcome our I didn't know who this dude with the David Tennant guy, and like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know who he was he supposed to be. Him. Confused. Yeah, I thought I was like, is that Harry's dad? No, mm -hmm. like, this old school hangs. You, you don't know who he is unless you. I mean, obviously, for the books on movies, you know who he was. But no, you when you start the movie, you're like, I don't know who this guy is. Got mm -hmm. great hair though. Great hair. Great hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, great hair. hair. We make an awesome doctor. Great tongue too. Uh, of course, they ice the old man, and who is uh, who is wake, wakes up? Harry. Harry wakes who up. Who ices the old man? I think is Voldemort. No, it was Wormtail. Was it Wormtail? Yeah. I thought it was Wormtail. Someone, someone used the death curse on him. No, he, uh, Wormtail opens the door, and then Voldemort's like, uh, move out of the way so I can give our guests a proper greeting, and you proper hear greeting. Voldemort say Avada Kedavra. Yeah. Oh. And of course, you know. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. That spells Shit's bad. going down. Uh, of course, Harry wakes in a fever from a fever dream. Uh, he thinks it's a nightmare that he's been having. Uh, he's woken up by Hermione, and uh, Ron is sleeping next to him. They're getting woken up very, very early. Hermione, of course, has been up for, like, you have to assume hours at this point because Her she's man. the overachiever. She's, and she's like, you can't go back to bed. Jesus. 
And uh, Ron's wearing a dope ass. <laughs> Would you say she's it, whacking it? We already got our. F- <laughs> All right. It took us 25 minutes to get to the first yeah. sex joke, though. Yeah, t- not Kevin, bad. The thing that broke me is Kevin just not breaking eye contact. Just looking at <laughs> Well, the idea of her whacking it in the morning before the guys are awake. <laughs> it's really disturbing. Uh, of course, Ron is there too in the 1970s tank top that's kind of dope. And I think my grandma had a couch with the same material. Doesn't matter. They're like, we got to get going. We're going on a fun thing. And they start walking out into the middle of the forest. And who do they meet up with? Uh, that's right they meet up with Amos Diggory who is like a very jolly person and they're like where's Cedric and then Cedric drops out of the motherfucking sky where was he? He just walks in, dude. No, 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 no. He drops out of the tree. He drops right. out of the tree. Yeah. yeah. And and like, I, I, what are you I doing with the tree, Cedric? Lost my shit. It's weird. She didn't have her glasses on and I'm just like what the fuck? She's like what? And I'm like First off, wear your goddamn glasses when we're watching yeah. movies. <laughs> Second off, it's Edward Cullen, and yeah. she didn't believe me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is she didn't wear her glass? I don't understand. It's like, what are we doing here? Uh, <laughs> it's a fucking joke to you. Do you, watch, do you watch this on your like the TV by your bed or the no, big ass TV? Good. Good. Must have big ass. Uh, of course, they climb up a hill as the sun rises, and they approach. We're just gonna ignore oh. the fact that like Amos got there with the sun. Was like climb the tree. When they come, you'll pop down. It'll be I fucking think, funny. I think the idea was that Cedric is just this like outdoorsy kind of guy, and he just likes to climb stuff because he's got so much energy in his beautiful chest that he can just get up a tree real fast. Yeah, mm. that was my guess. Before, <laughs> oh yeah, he also might be a Twilight guy because those guys could like jump and like skip off the trees, the trees, right? That's all that matters. Uh, they finish hiking up this small hill toward an old boot, and Harry's like, what's that? Once again, proving he doesn't really know anything that's going on. And everyone's like, it's not a boot, Harry. It's a port key. And they all touch it at the same time, and they go, ready, everyone? Cool. And it, and then no one preps Harry, and then he throws up all over the place. And they go, one, two, three, and they start spinning through space and time, because this thing is a port key. In fact, uh, spins them out right above the Quidditch World Cup. Uh, all the kids get thrown out, except for, I think it was uh, Arthur, uh, Amos, and Cedric, are just kind of hiking down. They're just like, <laughs> I hate the way that looks. Oh, I love it. I love that. I love it. Stupid. It's, such it's such a stupid. It's really stupid. So dumb. Uh, <laughs> people are flying all around. This is dope. There's like a tent encampment that's super awesome. Uh, there's flags from all over the countries. Now uh, they walk through the madness of little small tents. They come to a small tent and they enter it and then boom, magic. Magic is fantastic. I love magic. This tent I has everything that. inside. It the, the, is Go ahead. Sorry, that line so reminded me of the Ninja Turtles. I love being a turtle. Of where it's like, yeah, dude, you're right. You're being right. a turtle is better and magic is fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, that night, of course, they head off to the World Cup match, and the stadium is freaking amazing. Very much like the O2, I would imagine. Yeah. Where they play at Wimbledon. Yeah, oh, with a D. Oh, Same trying to pronounce it now. Right, yeah. keep getting pissed off when I say Hermione. Yeah. Or Hermione. <laughs> uh, you say it so I'm bad. Uh, the Malfoys, of course, are there, and they're just total dicks about where their seats are. They're like, we're sitting with the minister's box, yada, yada, yada. And they're like, we got good seats, too. Turns out, they don't have good seats. Fucking, <laughs> Drake, the fucking rafters. Draco with his Tom Hiddleston Loki Ragnarok suit. Mm-hmm. I was like, let's fucking go. That I, flag I, suit, like, you look dumb. I wanted to imagine Lucius, like, turning the corner and seeing Harry be like, oh, fuck, I tried to kill him earlier. I tried to kill him. Let's go, let's go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can I try to kill him? Dude, but Lucius coming in with, like, don't don't insult them. They're beneath us. Yeah. It's like damn. But also, oh. Lucius uh, throws a low key little foreshadow. He tells them to enjoy themselves while they can, and then walks away. And they're like, "What does that mean?" I would be like, well, "Hey, what the? Hey, whoa, whoa, hey, fuck does that mean? Yeah. What you got going on, dog? Call Dumbledore. Call the homies. Come out. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Weasleys, of course, are just up in the. They're like literally on top of the stadium, looking down. Uh, just like uh, and it was Valkyrie like a mile was. up. Jesus, it's, it's so. Really which to be fair, the way that they play fucking Quidditch might be great seats. Yeah, might no, be the best yeah, seats. Yeah. Uh, they watch the teams from Ireland introduced, and the next up, the Bulgarians are introduced, uh, which includes uh, the best seeker in the world, according to Ron uh, Victor Crumb. I always hated that scene. Ron is just Why? so. It was himself. cool seeing the crowd, but I just hated Victor Crumb coming in. It looks so you stupid. I just I hate him. You were vi- are I you Victor Crumb? I hate him. Uh, so the same thing where it's like that. He just doesn't look cool. They like, embody he, the feeling. He, mean, he never, he he's never like a sold like year old kid. He never Quidditch. sold like the hot guy that all the girls would be after. See, I, I was on a G. I loved his casting. Mm. I thought that it was perfect. That it wasn't this just like jockey looking dude. He was some dude that looks like he, he fucks in a bad he way. He looks like a guy that doesn't like shower and he like fucking doesn't like eat. He's, he doesn't realize he's a man. He just, he, eats, like, he just eats his meat like from the dead animal, I feel. That's like, what he's supposed to look his like. His name's Crum. It's just it's, Victor it's, Crumb it's with a K. Yeah. Of course, Cornelius. Uh, On the Victor part? Or? Cornelius Fudge gives the opening speech and the match starts. And we cut immediately to later that night back in the tent. Ireland presumably won this match. Barrett, is that correct? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so. It wasn't even close. Interesting tidbit. Uh. Ireland was actually beating uh, Bulgaria so bad uh, that Crum 
decided to catch the snitch without uh, without still being just to able to end the game. Yeah, just to end the game on his terms. So Ireland won, uh, but Crum uh, caught the snitch, which is like a weird bet that the Weasley twins make at some point with someone in the book, where they like call exactly how it's going to play out. But was wasn't like, cool. it like ten points to one seventy or something crazy? Where like they were kicking the shit out of Bulgaria. Yeah, it was like it was yeah. like a good like 160, 100. Well, don't you get one fifty for just yeah one fifty for just yeah, the yeah, secret, yeah, and yeah, they still that. lost. Yeah, and then they've got to go like lost a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> shit, <Yeah. laughs> shit. As soon as they lost, like she fucking booked it. She was like, I can't. Like, be Harry caught. gets back to Hogwarts. Like, like where's my Nimbus? They're gonna team? break fireball. They're gonna break my knees, dude. Of course, there's some crazy stuff happening outside, and at first they think it's just the Irish celebrating like the Irish do, but it turns out to be a little something more intense than that and they look it's outside and it's attack. like a fucking clan rally yeah. it is just yeah. guys with with these crazy suits on lighting everything on fire well it's like after the super bowl where people ride in the streets and they slip over trucks and they light shit on fire because they're happy like that's what they probably thought it yeah. was first that's what ireland won we're was. celebrating yeah. yeah watch out for the irish they get what, what do you got against the irish uh, they're known partiers is all i'm gonna say <laughs> they're a little intense uh in the chaos of course harry <laughs> gets i mean look at yeah <laughs> perfect example right like, don't get a couple drinks in her. <laughs> uh, Let's not care. make up lies. She's, perfect She's, like, She's like, like perfectly, like, chill. <laughs> <like, laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I swear you are, but she'll fucking kill you. Uh, in the chaos, Harry gets separated from the group and knocked out. Uh, Fudge Jr., uh... I'm sorry, uh, Crouch Jr., excuse me, uh, walks through the, the, the burned-out camp and uh, looks up and then puts up the dark mark into the sky. Of course, Harry wakes and sees him, and this is not good. Harry doesn't know what it is, but he knows it's not good, and it's time to run. And uh, as he runs, he hears Ron and Hermione calling back. Uh, they all meet up in the dark, and they look up, and they see the dark mark, and Harry's scar starts to burn. Suddenly, a bunch of good wizards materialize and try and stupefy everyone, but they miss horribly. Terribly. So, this is just a reason why <laughs> Voldemort... I'd be like, hey, guys, let's take this as a learning moment. Y'all suck at, po at pointing your wands at shit. Because these are three kids that weren't even moving. You gotta stupefy. Pull it down. You want me to tape it to your back? Yeah, please. All right. Uh, Barty Crouch Sr. is there and I accuses Harry of doing the dark mark and Arthur Weasley's like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, don't try to stick that on my shit, okay? Because that shit ain't gonna stick. And, they, and he just lets it go real quick. <laughs> don't try to stick that on my shit because that shit isn't gonna stick. Uh, he's like, also, I love that Harry's just like, the dark, what? What? He's just so confused Again, about Harry. Harry always is like on. in like, the read wrong Read a fucking place. book, dude. Yeah. Hermione's Harry's, on top of it. Yeah, Harry's like, it wasn't me. It was some dude over there. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll immediately believe you and run after that guy. Uh, they're all, we leave them as they're all staring at the dark mark of which, the sky. again, I was saying earlier, awesome. I liked that this movie kind of just all the dumb criticisms I had, they like address it. Harry's caught Take in the wrong off. place at the wrong time. And it's like, oh, please don't do it. And they're like, no, thank you. you're fine. Yeah. Just go get him. Like, thank you. Go chase the fucking bad guy. Also, just shout out to the effects of the Dark Mark, where it's the skull and then the snake is just coming out of it up in the so smoke cool. and the green smoke I didn't like the, the sky, sky stuff. The tattoo shit was cool. Tattoo shit. All dope. of it is fucking The sky awesome. stuff just felt like excessive. I didn't understand its purpose in the world. Uh, it's just to it strike fear in everyone's heart. So yeah. and you usually let people know it's coming back. Back in the, I think they explain this in this book, but they don't really bring it up in the movie, so it doesn't matter. Uh, back when Voldemort was originally in power, they would put the dark mark over someone's house uh, when a Death Eater would kill someone. So it was a sign, like, hey, we just, we fuck just shit okay. fuck shit cool. up. Yeah, it's like in college Could've football. You do, in college football, you do a cool play. You put a sticker on your helmet and be like, here's my, here's my dark mark. I did a cool play. I and by the that. end of the season, your helmet's full of dark marks. Yeah. But, uh, like I'm a baller. but yeah, it was Shot significant caller. here because it's the first time anybody's seen a dark mark in, in years, year, so that's why everybody is like fucking terrified right now. We're back in the Hogwarts Express, and at this point I noticed that for whatever reason, every child in this story has grown their hair out to a 70s style. And I'm all for fucking it. Dope. I'm all yeah. for it. Uh, Harry is trying to buy something from the chocolate cart, but loses his appetite for mere sweets when he sees, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Cho Chang. <laughs> <laughs> And they got a little moment here. They did. Dude. Okay. I, I mean, I love that you, you made the reference about the sweets because yeah, oh he saw that God. shit and was just like, chocolate ain't sweet anymore. Everything. Like, now, as I advise for time to one. risk it Let all. Let me ask yeah. you this question, Tim. Please do. Nick. Have you heard Cho Chang speak yet? Just in the. Just in later in the movie, right? Whatever the fuck. At it was. this point, we haven't seen her yet. We haven't heard her speak. We've just seen her. We haven't heard her speak, is what I'm driving at. Uh huh. <sighs> when we hear her speak for the first time with that Scottish accent. Yeah. It's everything. It's really cool. Everything. Uh, of course, Harry's like, okay, I'm immediately <laughs> in love with this girl because that's what happens when you're a child. You just mm -hmm, see someone mm -hmm. and she's cute and they give you the look and you lock eyes and you realize, oh, I want to dance Not with somebody. Not much change when you get older. Mm -hmm. you get and the that's true. I still have that look with the misses every Sunday. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hermione tells I've Harry. I've seen him have that look. 
to get in contact with, and to get in contact with Sirius <laughs> and tell him about the World Cup and the dream he had, where Baby V and the Funky Bunch killed an old man, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe presumably let Nagini swallow him whole and just and just digest him for a solid month. month yeah. uh, at, <laughs> at Hogwarts, uh, the French team flies in. This is where we get the first uh, a glimpse of the other schools. Uh, they fly in a giant carriage flown by Pegasus's Pegasi. Pegasi. Mm-hmm. Pegasi. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the uh, the team from the lovely ladies of. Bo Batons, Batons, Bo, uh, Bo Batons, Bo Batons. We'll just Mercy say that. Mercy High School. Uh, next sure. up, the Bulgarians show up in, a, in a, an old ship that's like a submarine ship, but it's like a ship, and it comes out of the water, and it's super, super cool. They are, of course, the team from Durmstrang Institute, which is like, is that a technical institute? You think? Is it institute? Yeah. Oh, you think it's, it's a trade institute? school? Yeah. I think it's like a trade school. No, no, it's, it's, like, it's, it's definitely not just a trade school. It's, it's, like it's just a, another like magic school. Yeah. Uh, Dumbledore, of course, gives the opening announcements. Hogwarts has been chosen. To host the Tri Wizard Cup, uh, Filch comes in in a weird little dancing, like an asshole sort of thing that he did, because he just doesn't know how to act around these people. And I guess and that's, <laughs> that, that's the pomp and circumstance he's supposed to have. Uh, the tournament brings together three schools. From each school, a student is selected to compete. Let me be clear: if chosen, you stand alone. Trust me when I say that these contests are not for the faint of heart. Dumbledore again, not really understanding the role of a leader, someone who should get instill confidence. Instead, just being like, you should be scared of it. Wait, that's did they? School. Did the students come into the actual Great Hall yet? Not yet. Okay. Cool. Of course. Then they welcome the lovely ladies of Bo Batons Academy of Magic and their instructor, Madame Maxime. Uh, we see the ladies come in, uh, led by Fleur Delacour. Delacour. Uh, she comes in. They do a little fun dance. Little butterflies oh, fly out everywhere. Ha! Ha! So do it with cool. the camera ready. Ha! I had such a crush on her. Oh, my God. That's uh, great. Uh, I think a little sister's there as well. Uh, next up, we get the men from Durmstrang Institute for Magical Learning. This, uh, again, is it a JC? I don't know. Maybe it's a state school. Who knows? Uh, their headmaster is Igor <laughs> Juko. <laughs> uh, Dumbledore explains the rules. Each contestant will have to compete in three super dangerous challenges. Uh, to explain the extra restrictions, we brought in the head. Uh, those extra restrictions. But the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, Barty Crouch, uh, just then... Uh, just the uh, a psychotic looking homeless man enters uh, and the magic that affects the ceiling goes fucking nuts with lightning uh, the transient takes out his wand and handles the stuff he looks like Lin-Manuel, Lin-Manuel Miranda with like makeup like in, 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 in a no, no, you're, thinking of, you're thinking of Igor oh, I'm thinking of that guy I'm sorry. talking about Mad Eye Moody okay yeah. I was, I was like, like, he looks nothing like Lin Manuel. Yeah. <laughs> no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter makeup could make that actor look like Lin Manuel. Uh, the kids are in awe because, of course, uh, this is the first time they've seen uh, the one and only Alistair Mad Eye Moody, the or or dark. Uh, he's an or and a famous or. Which and Harry's like again, no, no, I, I don't read fucking books. What's an or? And they're like, it's a dark wizard hunter. And that is the coolest thing you could it's possibly. It's the coolest be fucking. It's like Dog the Bounty Hunter in this world. Just the, yeah, it is. It's exactly yeah. like that. It's this is where we just like, like hey, what's racist. cool? Let's just give you the cool stuff. Great, dude. When he walks in and just shoots the storm out of the ceiling, what a I great intro! You know, of course, he walks in and immediately like everyone looks at him. And what does he do? He takes out a vial of well, you assume it's the curds juice. It's just, just the stuff that's getting mm. them long this time. They put it, and the kids all laugh it up because alcoholism <laughs> is not a big deal in the, yeah. in the wizarding world. They're just like. Oh, He's in the cold. He likes to take a little nip of the good stuff. You know, the old brandy. He's a little nip. He's warm up his chest a little bit. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's mm-hmm. fine. He lost a leg and an eye, and God knows what else. Yeah. Is anything else working on him? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> also, why didn't they grow his leg back? I digress. It doesn't matter. Uh, Moody that- enters and takes uh, the uh, Crouch tells the students that due to the new restrictions, no child under the age of 17 can throw their name into the mix. Dumbledore uh, changes that big ass statue thingy into the one and only goblet of fire, which spits out dope ass blue flames. Anyone wishing to enter the tournament can write their name on a piece of parchment and put it in the cup. Uh, we see Karkov sneak off. Oh, then it was weird. It was a weird cut here. We just see, we see like one shot of the Durmstrang. Guy, Kar- uh, Igor Karkov, Karkakov, sneaking in, Karkarov, thank you, Karkarov, sneak into the Great Hall at night, he's like, Ooh. and I'm like, wow, that's weird. Oh, that was Ooh. later, though, wasn't that? No, that's right after this, <laughs> oh, according really? to my notes. And then Mad-Eye Moody, we, next we get up, you Mad-Eye Moody. Wait, wait, he was probably putting, somehow making it so uh, Victor won, right? I imagine he's putting Victor's name in. I don't know. It was weird. They never really went back to it. A hundred times. You see one shot where he's like, ooh, then closes the door. and the. I think it it was supposed to help with the mystery of who put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Didn't need it. But really, he was just making sure Victor got in there because he knew Victor would bring in the victory. Next up, we got Mad Eye Moody's defense against the Dark Arcs class, where he is. He's like, you know what, everyone? You've been taught shit. We're going I'm to teach you baby. the real shit. Y'all are pussies, man. I'm going to teach you about the three unforgivable curses, and you need to know what you're up. There's some shit happening outside. You didn't know what you're up against. The ministry doesn't want me to do this, but you know what? I'm going to prepare y'all. And I'm like, good. 
Good for you. you. He's one of the guys that's like, everybody gets medals these days and awards. Like, everybody's... Oh, uh, he's like, no participation awards. He's totally like the, oh, y'all are snowflakes. Okay. No, no trigger <laughs> warnings. He's None the, of that bullshit. He's the teacher who's like, oh, y'all have read about syphilis, but you're about to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. No, teacher. Who wants to know what it tastes like? Who wants to taste like syphilis? Too far, Nick. I'm sorry. Too far. Uh, yeah. You don't have to one-up yeah, every time. We, just, had a, we had a great just thing. Just let it go. A teacher's <laughs> pulling out his dick in front of a class. Why are you making it? Her like, nah. No. Oh, look at that king. And now you're doubling down even <laughs> Let's take a look at the lollipop. <laughs> Why? Uh, Moody asks Ron for the first curse, and the only one the redhead, a little frightened, can think of is the Imperious Curse. Uh, Moody takes a little insect, makes it bigger, and then floats it around with the Imperious Curse and makes it fall on people's heads and all these things. And it's kind of creepy, but it's also kind of fun until it gets fucking shit gets real, real. He's like, what should I have him do next? Jump out the window? Drown himself? And then it gets real. Where he's like, a lot of witches and wizards claimed they were under the spell of the Imperious Curse when they did you know who's uh, bidding. So, this shit's fucking real. It's great. It's creepy as fuck. I, I didn't like him using, like, showing... Like, because I feel like, for the most part, he was just making it fly and float over stuff. Like, when he held it over the water, it still was trying to, like, hold back. And it's like, that doesn't... Like, the Imperious Curse is you, like, going into the mind and controlling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. it was a little unclear on what it was doing. Because, like, when he was talking about it, I, thought, I was like, when it's going out the window, is it stopping itself? And from the waters, it's stopping itself? So it's like you can control it, but you can't kill it? But yeah, then, so then immediately, that, that's then they started all talking That's all wrong, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. the weird example. Just visually, it was weird. I thought, I thought it was just also just to show how fucked up and dark he can get. Where, like, he's... You know, this, although this is an ugly ass bug or whatever, like he's still showing, like, I could kill this fucking thing right now. Like, I could drown it. Should, should I drown it? Like, it's just really, it sets the but mood for what kind of person he curse, is. Moody. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Of course, next off, uh, he does show off the curse because he goes to Neville, of all people, uh, which we'll have significance later in the, in the movie. And uh, Neville brings up the, uh, how do you say this curse, Barrett? The Cruciatus curse. The Cruciatus curse, uh, which hits very close to home with him. Moody, uh, uh, he, Uses it on the little bug and it tortures him. And then, of course, Moody goes to uh, Hermione for the final curse. And she doesn't even want to say what it is. But she does. She's a uh, Avada Kedavra. Does uh, she say it? I don't think she does. Someone else. Oh, no, she does. She she's like, like, she's want, like, fuck you. She doesn't you, want to say it because she knows what's, he's no going to kill on my hands. Yeah. Uh, I was really proud of her for it. I was like, and he good says, for you. And he says, of course, only one person uh, in is known to have survived it. And he's sitting in this room. Hell, yeah, he is. is. dope as fuck. Uh, then he ices the thing. He just kills it. In front of everyone, he's like, this is a life and death thing. Everyone needs to realize. It's a spider, dude. Yeah, fuck him. Uh, later, Hermione is very, very distraught, as is Neville. Uh, Moody catches up with Neville and, of and invites him for tea. He's like, sorry, kid. Like, I know you've been through some shit. We all have. Come have a cup of tea with me. And I'm like, what a nice guy. I what could possibly go wrong? Another terrible moment of, like, someone should have directed that scene just a little bit better of Longbottom just standing in front of the window. He's so lurchy. And it's lurchy. like, stop. This lurchy. looks so dumb. Kevin, give me the give me the, the girls thing again. The ladies again. Ready? <sighs> 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 All right. Uh, of course, uh, later it's raining and everyone's all with all of his stupid ass Hufflepuff friends cheering his ass on. Cedric uh, Diggory goes over and, and he puts his name in the thing. And everyone's like, oh, he did it. He put his name in the thing. He's so tall. I'm like, he's not that fucking tall. First off. Second off, if I needed to, I get a stool. I put a fucking stool in the thing. I put my name in the thing. Okay. Yeah. It's not that. It's that being tall is not. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I get a running start, you fucking know. dunk on that shit. Yeah. Fade away, dunk. Give me like a trampoline. God damn it. God, he's good looking. Yeah. Uh, Fred and George, of course, this is a great little scene where Fred and George attempt to drink an aging potion, and Hermione's like, "That shit ain't gonna work, dude." The Dumbledore himself put that age ring around this, that cool little blue light, and he's like, <laughs> "He's like, you're not gonna fucking be able to outsmart him. It's it's so stupid." They're like, "That's why it's genius because it's so dumb." It's gonna work. They jump. They drink the potion. They jump in and like, hey, it worked. Throw their name. Doesn't work. They turn, it, it blows them fucking back. Probably breaking one of their knees. Yeah. And they just turn super old and they start getting pissed at each other. It's super fun though. Um, the growing hair looked real bad. <laughs> Very bad. Uh, Crum of course comes in and throws his name and then stares just fucking deeply into Hermione's eyes. Just thirsty. Uh, like I uh, have not had water in years, and you are just a tall, cold glass of it. Uh, I wanted this to happen so bad. He's it just like happen. such a caveman. That's why I just. But like forever, the, she should have married Victor Crumb instead um, of you marry me. Like he's just like this <laughs> fucking like. But he's not. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know because he, he's, he's in the like library. A, but he's I don't like know. A Neanderthal. I don't know. If he's in the library all the time for her, or he just likes studying. Yeah, it's good you know. That. Yeah, Barrett. He's in for there for her. Does he for like sure. studying or for her? He doesn't like studying for her. He doesn't give a shit about studying. He's he, a Quidditch player. He's a Quidditch player. He's getting paid. All of his classes are getting mysteriously It's the college cast. athletes. Thing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, now, of course, the moment we waited for, the champion selection has begun. Dumbledore coaxes the names out of the fire one by one from Durmstrang, Victor Crumb, of course, from Bo Batten's, uh, 
Fleur Delacour, uh, Hardy, and then from uh, Hogwarts, of course, Cedric Diggory. And everyone's like, yeah. And Harry's like, thank God. Thank God. This is one story I'm I can have just... have a smooth ooh, year this smooth year. Smooth year. Easy I thought peasy, it was gonna be Harry. squeezy. I thought it was going to be like, oh, great, here we fucking go. And then it wasn't. And then it was. Uh, only one person will win the Tri-Wizard Cup. And you know, and then he, he, he waves his hand and we see it for the first time. The Tri-Wizard Cup. Just infinitely, infinitely better than that stupid trending game reward that Greg keeps on his desk. Just wait. Lights up. Magical. Might be a port key. We don't know. Uh, hey, shut up. We don't want to fucking lose points, dude. We already lost 15 oh, points shit, today. Right, bro, I'm sorry. That was your fault. Greg's for the best. Not standing for anything. Yeah, you know bro. Why I mean? don't you fucking you, stand you by your own? Why'd you eat In-N-Out? I thought fries, In-N-Out burgers are good. Look, I've look, said look, that before. Do I want to dis- agree with you? D- or is it clear that you just don't like the fries? I mean, maybe. It's kind of clear. But I'm never, I'm never going to disagree. <laughs> Crystal. With, with you. Well, I look at you a piece of glass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, everything seems fine to Danny until, uh oh, the flames turn red once again, and one piece, little piece of parchment gets spit out. And as it floats up, we see Harry's name on it. Dumbledore, of course, catches it and reads it. Uh, Harry's just dramatic, very not, not happy about this. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. He's pissed. Yeah. Uh, he is pissed. And he then, should be, you know? I, lo- I love the reaction that Harry has. He's like, oh, fuck, what did I do? Oh of course, Harry's like, like, yeah, Harry's like, shit. Harry like, Her mind, down. He's like, stand up, bro. Like, go, go over there. What I like, especially about this, though, is they have a quick cutaway this. to Hagrid where Hagrid just goes, no. No. Yeah. No. Like, this is not happening. Like, Harry's not going to go into this. And then her, and then Ron is just immediately is like, boo, boo. But you think they would have the same reaction about anybody that's like three years older than them. Right? Like, they're still kids at this point. Like, oh, fuck uh, them, though. No, I mean, you age exponentially every year is like 10 years. <laughs> By the time you're a senior, you're a solid 70 year old person. They don't care if you die anymore. Yeah. If such a junior dies, he's what, 64? He he's lived 64 a good years life. Old. Just <laughs> hot, though. Uh, Harry gets pushed to the front where he has to reluctantly accept the challenge. Professor McGonagall is like, you fucked up. And Snake is like, you're fucked. Like, they're just all looking at him like, this is not good for you. McGonagall um, leaned over. I was like, 40 bucks on Harry. Change your bed. Uh, there's some shithead kid in the back. It's like, He's a cheater. He cheated. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, fuck you, dude. Like, fuck like, you. Also, Y'all were cheering yeah, for fucking yeah, Fred and George yeah. five minutes ago. Uh, of course, they drag his ass into a room and give him the what for. Dumbledore's like, how did you do it, Harry? How did you do it? And Harry's like, I didn't do it. I did not do this. And then he's like, you know what? I believe you. Uh, of course, <laughs> out of all the people to, uh, to, to come to his aid, I think Snape is the one that's like, I don't think he could have mm. done that. Like a really, really exceptionally, only a really, really exceptionally powerful. Uh, that was a really, really exceptionally powerful Confundus charm uh, could have done this, and Harry's just not. Po- it's not possible. Uh, uh, Moody uh, came to that. Moody's conclusion. the one that says right. Uh, Karkakov accuses Moody of doing it, and Moody's like, "Well, you fucking did it because you used to be a dark wizard. Remember, I remember your ass because I used to hunt you down. You could have taken my other leg." And he's like, "Maybe." And Karkakov's like, "Oh shit, I do remember." Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was you. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh, <laughs> you had two eyes. Didn't recognize. <laughs> uh, and then of course, Crouch's like, "Listen, dude, this is just a uh, just a. This is the contract. There's no way around it. Uh, this represents a binding agreement. Harry's in as of tonight." He's a try. He's one of the Tri Wizard champions. Now this is where I take a little. Let's take a little stroll here. Mm-hmm. You can't call him a champion if he hasn't won the thing yet. A Tri Wizard no, no, contestant. They're, no, they're, but they're champions because the they they are school. elected from each school. Yeah, but he hasn't won. You're not the champions if you if you if you didn't win the Super Bowl. I don't think well, you're it's, it's, a, it's a different form of champion. Yeah, it's a like different it's, word. If like you, you, again, you love like, Harry Potter. You are a champion for this. I think Mad Eye franchise yeah. would have a problem with this word because he doesn't believe in participation awards. And just just because you got selected doesn't mean you're a champion. Good God. Okay. Just that's not. Why what don't that you go word over there means. into the icebox with the rest of your snowflake friends? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see what you guys are saying. No, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> totally makes sense. Now. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Context wise, that's great. Uh, <laughs> just, just, just wanted to get the joke I out there. Sorry. I said, you know, I just throwed it out there to see if it got hit. It just got caught and put away. So sorry about that. I apologize. Oh, grab that. Uh, let's move on. Uh, Professor, we gotta go and Dumbledore chat later. I mean, we gotta put an end to this shit, uh, or we could rig it like our local Quidditch matches because Mama needs a new Porsche. <laughs> you know, we even we gotta go. Was like, like uh, we, we kill the other three kids, then we just win this uh, shit. Right? Quick question, like. Was the what was the punishment of not like why didn't they just be like nah nah he he wasn't supposed to be in there and just take him out well because well, they uh, said that there was like binding it was a question for it was a question for three people so I guess uh, we can just add a fourth is there, there death on the there, so the the whole point of it was that okay. they could have pulled him out but Dumbledore was like Snape was like I don't listen if there's something fishy. Well, they probably could have, but he was like, I think we should let things play out because something's going on, and the only thing we're going to be able to get from, we're, the only the only way we're going to get any information is if we let this thing just Let's play out the way it's supposed to. Basically, use him as bait. Basically, bait. Dumbledore's like, all right. 
So uh, that scene doesn't happen in the book because all of it's like main, mainly from Harry's perspective. Crouch goes into like not super more of it, but he is like this is a magical binding contract, and we'll get into some of like other magical binding contracts throughout the series. But the uh, not not death, but the theory is because they don't really explain it is that like you, your body would be forced to still like go into the trial and stuff like that. And then the game designers are like, fuck, we just made this for three people. Yeah. <laughs> like, shit, we gotta go we home. We got three lanes. And yeah. there's, like, there's like four yeah. dudes who are like, fuck. Open up the debug menu. We, we were done. Home. We were done. <laughs> yeah. we, now we gotta work OT. And yeah. this is what the video, entire video Bring game back industry the level designer. complains about all the time. <laughs> it's crunch time. Uh, let's see. Back at the Governor uh, Common Room, Ron and Harry get into it. Ron accuses him of always wanting oh. eternal glory. Harry's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Ron just goes, oh, piss off. And that's like, well, fuck you, So Ron. inappropriate. I all of you, this. Ron. Yeah. The next day, Rita Skeeter comes in. She's a writer for the Daily Prophet, and she brings her photographer, and they start interviewing the quartet of contestants, and she gets really handsy with these kids. Real handsy, especially with Harry, and it's like, yo, motherfucker, like, what are you trying to do? Like, oh, hey, does this remind you of your old home, you yeah. slut? It's like, damn, damn. Rita. Damn. Uh, Rita Skeeter. Rita's like, no, I won't tell anyone. Take it out. Uh, she gets Harry. She gets Harry's age wrong. <laughs> stop. <laughs> you don't always. Oh, stop. You, it's, it's, you're fine. It was that fun. was the first sexual thing I did. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. 50 minutes in. You guys did remember the first when one. You, <laughs> Do you remember the other thing? The teacher <laughs> Hermione blowing the teacher? <laughs> no, it was like, just the, like, the lollipop. Stop. See what the flavor it was. God. Syphilis. <laughs> 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 What's it taste like? Turns out cherry syphilis. Oh, Jesus. right. No more sexual in in your endos. No, just don't push it. You can make your own. Just don't push other people's <laughs> over is all we're saying. <laughs> the joke uh, can end. Of course, <laughs> she's totally edi- <laughs> she's totally editorializing here, uh, which Harry catches on A to when he looks at her. Or- yeah, she's like, he's like, that's not, I'm 12, I'm, or 13, whatever. Uh, and then she goes, uh, he, he looks over, he's like, my eyes aren't glistening with the ghosts of my past. Uh, gets pissed and then leaves. She uh, reminds me of Tammy number two from Parks and Rec. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Mm. Just kind of like, mm. like, this older lady, like, kind of like, she's fucked up and she's got stuff, but she's also horny. I mean, you know, she has to do it. She got to do what she got to do. Uh, <laughs> Harry gets a note from uh, from Sirius. Says we need to talk face to face. Meet me in the Gryffindor common room at one o'clock. Come alone. P.S. Uh, watch out for the bird that bites. And then the little owl that oh, bites. Bites. That was funny. That was yeah. fun. Uh, Sirius, uh, he goes down there. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. Uh, sees a newspaper. T- has him on it. It's all this bullshit story that Rita Skeeter wrote. Crumbles it up. Throws it in the fireplace. And whose face do we see appear in the fireplace? Sirius Black. I love this. He's like, <coughs> Harry. We have to talk. And I'm like, this is cool. You can just talk through the fire. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Didn't love it. You didn't love it. Oh, you weird. cannot love it. So it's much. some magic shit. I don't like. I it, love it. It's uh, it's weird because it's different in the the book. The it's still the flu powder that uh, Harry used in Chamber of Secrets, but they just put their head through, so their face just kind of appears through the flame. But uh, yeah, I don't know why they chose to have him appear in like the logs and shit. I like weird. the design that they did. Like where like yeah. It, in my mind, it works the same way, where it's like you're halfway through. But also, shouldn't the flu network is the flu network actually connected to Hogwarts? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's. I I thought it was kind of cool, but it's also just, you know, you can do anything with magic. Forget, forget no, everything exactly. you know. I get it. It's just it is a forget everything you know. But yeah. it's, it it is magic though. You know what I mean? Like it's. I feel like it's if you have magic, you can do whatever. And that's, that's why I don't like. You could have popped out of like his belly, and like we still would have been like, oh, that was cool. Like, but that wouldn't have that wouldn't work. <laughs> Why not? There's no flu network you could have been for really bellies. in someone else's mouth, and when they open their mouth, a little head pops up. Po- oh. yeah. hey, but like, Harry. I feel like <laughs> Barry just explained that this actually works with the like the the shit that we learned. But it, it didn't look the way that we learned. We yeah. forgot everything we knew. The maybe it was all in Harry's head. We don't know. Uh, Sirius Quest tells Harry uh, Hogwarts isn't safe anymore. The devils are inside the walls. Uh, Igor Karkaroff was a Death Eater. Uh, Crouch, ha- Crouch has a heart of stone. He sent his own kid to Azkaban, Barty Crouch Jr., Azkaban. Uh, and do you think any one of them, he was, he's like, do you think they put my name in it? And he's like, well, someone did. Whoever did is not a friend of yours. So keep your uh, your friends close, Harry. Keep your friends close, Harry. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, uh, number three with no cheese. <laughs> <laughs> It's number, number three. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid call, uh, Ron comes downstairs. He's like, "What are you doing, Harry?" And he's like, "Go back to bed. You already fucking Piss yelled at off. me, Ron. Piss off, you piece brilliant. of shit." Uh, that's and fucking that's brilliant. That's fucking brilliant. In it. Uh, down at uh, ne- uh, next up, we're down at the. Now, here's what I'm gonna ask, Barrett. You get to make this choice. In the books, it's called the Great Lake, right? But in the movies, they call it the Black Lake. 
I need to. Uh, we'll call it the Black Lake from now on because that's what they refer to it in the movies. What, but what I called it the Great Lake before, and people were giving me shit in the comments. What do English people? What do what the British people want? Because they're like, oh, lake. it has to be Philosopher's Stone. Well, when you Fuck Google you it, when you Google the Great Lake, Harry Potter it comes up. It's also known as the Black Lake. So it's yeah, known by yeah, both. I, yeah. So I would say the Great Lake. I think is what they usually call it in the books. And then also, they call it the Forbidden Forest in the books Not as the well. Dark Forest? Yeah, and they call it the Dark Forest in the movies. Dark Forest is cooler. We're going with that. In, Forbidden uh, Forest makes it sound like... In the Pottermore stuff, uh, she said that Harry Potter is American now. Like, so it's ours. Oh, that makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. I uh, didn't make that somewhere. Well, let's see. They're hanging out, and uh, and Neville is like, dude, I know everything there is to know about this leg. I'm so excited. I'm just coming into my own. Uh, he's working <laughs> through a book that Moody gave him called Magical Water Plants of the Highland Locks. Uh, just then, Hermione, Ginny, and Ron come to deliver a message, and this is the scene's hilarious because it's totally what kids do. Ron's not talking to Harry. Harry's not talking to Ron, so they all go through Hermione, and she's like, you know what? Damn it. I'm not an owl. Yeah, just go talk to Hadrick. Very funny, cute. Scene. Ron says to go talk to Hadrick. Hagrid wants to talk to you via like fifteen other people. But Ron was also there, right? He yes, was, like right next to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, I take it back. I like this movie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you come around. See, I, I, character I, development, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. You just saw it right before. Yeah, your eyes. I like the movie. Is that right? Uh, that night, of course, uh, Hagrid and Ron head out into the forest, and Hagrid asks if Harry's brought his father's cloak. Uh, Harry notices that Hagrid's wearing a flower and comes to Harry, and he's like, "What the fuck is? What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me?" Tonight? He's gonna watch some fucking giants go out. Fucking <laughs> torment to Brienne, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Best case scenario, I watch two giants bang. Worst case, I'm in the middle of that. Uh, we find out. What, uh, why Hagrid's done that? Because, of course, he meets up with Madame Maxime, who he's got a little bit of a crush on. And this is a very, very endearing scene. And, of course, he wants to take her to show her something because he thinks that dragons are magical. And the rest of us think they're terrifying as fuck, including Harry, who sees the dragons and goes, holy shit, dragons. That's the first challenge. And we see the, the horn-tailed uh, whatever the hell it is that he has to go up against. And it's just the, the scariest Bulgarian thing. Horn the Bulgarian horn-tailed. Horn it's terrifying as shit. Maxine is like, uh, oh, like an actual real dragon. My bad. The yeah, Hungarian horn-tailed. Yeah. Hungarian. Oh, Romanian. You're right, you're right, you're right, it was, it was, it was Romanian. Is it Romanian? Yeah. I'll get to it in a second. I had it written yeah, down. Yeah, Romanian. Probably. No, Hungarian horn tail. Hungarian, Hungarian yeah. horn tail? I'm pretty sure. The alliteration. Oh, they yeah. brought them all over from. Well, he. Someone says is Charlie brought had to bring them over from Romania. Uh, didn't Ron tell you? And then Harry's like, no, his bitch ass didn't tell me anything about and this. And that was in the first book, right? What? My brother Charlie. He uh, is a dragon. Dragons. They bit my finger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Harry's one. even more pissed at Ron because Ron didn't tell him about this, even <laughs> though his brother Charlie clearly told him what's going on. Of course, they find out later. And we've happened. actually met Charlie a couple times in the books at this point, but they're just like, yeah, fuck that guy. And we meet him at the house and shit. Uh, somebody made, made badges, and I can't remember what they say, but they're basically fucking with Harry, which yeah, is fucked up. It's just like yeah. a bunch of like pro Isn't Cedric, it? and then it turns into Harry, Harry stinks, stinks, yeah, which is a really mean thing to say. Of course, yeah. Harry, uh, concerned for his fellow Hogwartian. <laughs> Really mean thing to say. He got a weird attitude today. I'm like, it. <laughs> I'm like it. A little, little behind the scenes action. Prior to this, uh, Kevin was like, "Do you guys want to order Thai food?" And we were all yes. And Tim put a message in the app that said, "Make it as spicy as humanly possible." Is that what it said? And I said, holy said, Please shit, make it spicy. You were in oh, pain. Oh, did you today. not eat your food? I okay, ate all of it. Wow. And he cried. He was crying. Like, what was I crying. for you? Uh, of course, Harry tells uh, Harry's like I gotta tell my fellow Hogwartian about the dragons because I don't give a shit about the other kids. But Cedric, yeah, I got Cedric. You know he's cool. Not. What, a, what uh, a good guy now, is Harry Potter. Here's here, what you know? I, he's a great guy, and Cedric, giant piece of shit. No, 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 he's not. no, yes, no, no, yes. No. Harry pulls him aside and says, "Hey, dra clear as day, dragons. Dragons are the first challenge. Get your head on straight. Go figure it out. When it comes time for Cedric to repay the favor, what does he do? You might want to take a bath." Wink, wink, and then walks away. I'm like, why don't you just tell me to fucking listen to the thing out of the water? Yeah, it's easy. Hey, you remember I said dragons? No, clear no. As fucking but then day. he's like, Nigga, go to this specific bathtub because he knew that what, Myrtle she would be, tell him. She could be accosted by the ghost of Myrtle. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. He experienced Maybe something. He's into it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Cedric was into it, well, but Harry she, sure remember was she was like, oh, the bubbles were gone by the Myrtle. time he figured out, and I saw his dick. You that, that's Cedric, they all like, saw his dick, though. Guys, we can't... The like, movie. This is a real question. Comments can't complain about us getting sexual, because that scene was sexual, sexual. dude. Like, she okay. wanted oh. to see his dick. Dude, like, it's that crazy. Was, but to be fair, you gotta give it to her. She's been a ghost for, like, 60 years. And she point. looks 60. <laughs> She's old. <laughs> ghost I, know, I still hate her, and that was inappropriate. I'm gonna ask a real question here. <laughs> Go for it, You man. don't have to answer it. Okay. How many kids do you think take advantage of this bath? With with Modi Mortal watching, it's a it's a very special bath. Like not not well, everyone. It's a prefix it, bath, yeah. right? So you I gotta think, be a prefect. Hey, if we're yeah. just jumping to the bath right now, I think we need to have our first ever Harry Potter rank those apps. Ooh, 
Or Were they born? Born in labs. Now it's time to rank those abs. Welcome back to Rank Those Abs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Nick Scarpino. Today, of course, we are going through all the abs in the Harry Potter series, which, if memory serves correct, is just this one scene. Just this scene and the scene with the fish. I guess uh, Crumb has some abs in that, right? Is he shirtless in that one? We can't no, remember. I think, so. I think, I he's, think he's got a little shirt, tank yeah. top. They're all wearing like those old 1940s dive suits. Swimsuits, yeah. Uh, in this one, dive Daniel Radcliffe, suits. not zero abs. Just zero abs. Flat a as a surfboard. Uh, does not have any definition whatsoever. Actually, I think, I think a lot it's of just Tom Holland. It's a Tom Holland effect. Because he's, so he's a skinny kid, like it's easy to get abs. But Tom Holland had actual oh, yeah. Tom six Holland pack. Had earned his hey, place. Daniel so Radcliffe, much. unfortunately, had just a little bit of a line delineating like the midpoint of There's his body. Two that was pretty nips much it. And then a nips. line. Mm. But he's adorable. Yeah. And that's it for the podcast. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 of course, Malfoy is again up in a tree. For no reason. Apparently, yeah. his kids love to hang out in trees. What the fuck, Malfoy? You he creepy gives, little shit. He gives Harry shit. Harry calls him pathetic and just takes him on. But before he, uh, Malfoy can cast his skull behind his back, Moody intervenes and turns him into a ferret. Just trans, transfigures him into a ferret. And then forces him into another Crab's pants. pants. Now, you're going to tell me I'm over-sexualizing the Harry Potter franchise. They're doing when we got ferret on man. boy action in this next now, scene. Again, we're just saying you keep over-sexualizing <laughs> our already <laughs> fucked up comments. You know just, what I mean? You got to take it where it goes. You got to take the ball where it goes. You can just read uh, <laughs> Professor McGonagall steps in and reprimands Moody. She's like, we don't use transfiguration as a punishment. Moody's like, well, I heard it both ways. Uh, Moody makes Harry come with him into a room full of lenses. He takes off his big leg. Uh, there's a big-ass chest with someone locked in there. And he's like, what's in the chest? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. No, he's like, he oh, okay, says cool. something even better. He's like, oh, I wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me if I told yeah, you. And it's like, I told oh, him it's so cool. Hey, uh, Moody, of course, just flat out asks, like, what are you going to do about the dragon? And then he tells him, uh, he's like, oh, shit. No, you know, he's like, listen, everyone else is getting cheated. Like, to be fair, all the other people had these, the like Igor and uh, Maxine. They were all probably helping him out. He's like, I'm a hundred percent. Maxine went back and immediately was like, "Floor, yeah, this is dragons. what's going on. It's a dragon. You're gonna have to hit it in the balls." And he's like, "What? It's their weakness?" He's like, "What? You got to play to your strengths." And he's like, "What are you good at?" And he goes, "Well, I'm. Uh, I guess I can. I, I'm, I can fly." And he goes, "I'm a good flyer, but I'm not allowed a broom." And he goes, "But you are allowed a wand, right, Harry? Use your fucking head for once. You can use Axio and just bring the shit to Axio. you." And then for a month in the books, he's trying to learn how to do Accio, yep. and not, it's so Not in the movie, boring. though, because it's the next day. Yeah. The next day is the first day of the trial. We're at the prep tent, and everyone is nervous as fuck. Her, uh, Hermione, of course, comes check on Harry, and they have this cute scene <laughs> where they're talking. And it's just, you know, again, don't, cute little flirt. Don't do this. No, I mean, I'm not, it's not sexual, but they do have a little bit of, like, it's a little chemistry here, I think. I always thought. Well, I'm like, she clearly cares for him. It could have gone either way, is all I'm saying. It could go either way here. We're still, it's anyone's game. She should have married Crumb. That's the right person for her. You know what I mean? Head Either way, uh, she gets super nervous for him, then uh, can't contain herself. She busts through the curtain and hugs him right as Rita Skeeter comes in with her photographer. And she's like, young love can't be stopped. I want to use my hands on them both. And you're like, Skeeter, get the fuck out of here, you creepy. Out of nowhere. It's yeah, really creepy weird. creepy little fuck. Uh, of course, Dumbledore interrupts. Uh... To get to prep the contestants, and is like, "What are you doing here, Hermione?" This is and she's a, like, I, "I don't know." That, <laughs> that was a, that was a good moment because he does start the speech, yeah, and then he's like, Wait, "What are you? Get out of here!" Yeah, go on, get. <laughs> Uh, they all, they each have to reach into a bag and pull uh, one dragon, and you guys were correct. Harry pulls the Hungarian horn tail. Uh, each dragon has uh, has been given a golden egg to protect. The egg contains a clue for the next challenge, so if you fail this one, you, you're you pretty much fucked for the rest of the challenges, and you're going to go in fourth into the final challenge uh, if you don't get the egg. Uh, we skip ahead, of course, all the other three contestants, and we hear over the loudspeaker, the three, the three contestants prior to Harry have done it. Now it's Harry's turn. He walks out, and he sees the egg, and he's like, cool, it's right there. Real quick, not let's, let's not skip the from now on, every time the challenges start, he's like, all right, well, we're counting down. Three, two. And the cannon always goes and off just early. Fucks up. Every Why time. Why do they keep Filch around? That's and all then, I'm saying. And they turn back to Filch, and he's just like, <laughs> it's like, I get it, Phil. You guys the, didn't talk about what the, you know, <laughs> what was. I've been there. <laughs> and also, also, the Weasley twins just taking bets every single one. It's oh, fucking yeah. hilarious. It's a good bit. Love it. Uh, shit gets real violent real fast because the Hungarian horn tail comes at Harry with a fucking massive blast of fireball. Harry, of course, uh, it calls his, his broom. It takes a second to come in. As it does, he times it perfectly, jumps on the back of it as a fireball would have just basically killed him, mm -hmm. roasted him alive. We take off, and the dragon's like, uh, You forget I can fly also? I can fly and break out. Out of my chain, Wait, which chain. I guess so was unnecessary. And now everyone it. here is unsafe. Yeah, this is but the most cool unsafe thing. Hogwarts. But to be uh, fair, it'd be awesome if you were watching it. this, right? This is like be the best sport around. It would be around. awesome for the ten seconds they're on the actual stage. Yeah, then you'd be like, wow, it's boring. And then it's like, I guess we'll just. I mean, imagine watching a bullfight, right? But imagine then the bull gets out of the ring. 
Yeah, are you, people yeah. still watching? Like, had, are people being like, "This is cool"? This is when a are car. I'll, like, answer, yeah. I'll oh, answer your no. question with another question. Did we not figure out how to do that in Tokyo Drift with all the cell phones? Mm, mm. Also, more Remember? importantly, cell phones. You tune in, everyone. Satellite can see footage. It. Satellite oh. cell phones. I mean. Dumbledore. I'm not Magical bringing up how phones. they're watching. I'm bringing yeah, up their, the their safety. <laughs> yeah. Also, Dumbledore I'll bring up, there. to be fair, this doesn't happen in the book. It's all still in the stadium. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, here they break out. Harry has a scene where he loses control of his broomstick, has to climb on a roof to get it, grabs it right at the last minute. Hogwarts and then, of course, getting fucked. Hogwarts getting fucked up, but they'll just use the fix, the Reparo thing, and fix it. Uh, Harry, of course, Reparo. outsmarts the dragon by flying through the bridge. The dragon's like, I don't know, and then hits the bridge <laughs> and just tumbles down to his death. We've killed this be beautiful magical creature ah, as fine. simply and as played. stupidly as the first dragon. Actually, the second dragon goes down in Game of Thrones. First one went down pretty hard, but the second one. It was kind of weird. It was fuck. a weird transition because I, I felt like I felt like it way. slowed down enough Stabbing before it hit throat. that bridge. But you felt like they should have known by the second. Yeah, one. I know. Uh, what's that? I feel like it slowed down enough before it hit that. It bridge. slowed down enough that it should have just ping ponged off of it. But <laughs> like I thought it was just like gonna poof, like you know. Like, but the directors were like, we run out just of crash budget. through and like concussion dead. Uh, a beat, and everyone looks over the horizon and assumes the worst. Like Harry's dead. It was of him course. just puttering around. And right? then Harry putters back up with his with the, the tip of his broom on fire, and it's not doing well. It's like your car's on its one one cylinder, and the other five have just blown out. But you're gonna get to the finish line, and Harry, of course, crosses the finish oh, line. You got, five, you got six cylinders in your car. Oh, I got a V six, doggy dog. Yeah, I don't, V6 a lot of I'm rocking a V four. Yeah. Oh, well, I got a Honda. Uh, so Harry I. comes up with the right. He grabs. Uh, Hermione is very, very excited and very, very relieved again, proving once again that she has a little thing for her. But oh, I digress. Uh, Harry grabs the egg, and we get a cool match cut here. He grabs the egg, lifts it up, and he's in the Gryffindor uh, common room that night. And now he's starting to buy into his own bullshit a little bit, which Ron is like, I was right about you, because he's like, who wants to, Who wants me to open the egg? You guys want me to open the egg? Yeah. I don't the egg. Wasn't it the exact opposite where Ron came out and was like, I was wrong. We'll be friends again. Ron gives him like a look, and then he opens the egg, and it's ear piercing, and then he shuts it, and then everyone's like, we're going to bed. And then Ron comes over, and he's like, I'm sorry. You're I thought right. he wasn't even out there at this point. He, well, he gives, he's been in the corner. He's like, oh, yeah, it's weird. pouting. It's hmm. weird. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Ron apologizes and he's like, after watching that, you would have to be completely mental to have put your name in that. So I'm sorry. Uh, and he's like, that's what I've been saying, man. And then they just go. Mm -hmm. But I, I do love how, I do <laughs> no. love the biting comments back from Harry. <laughs> Audio <laughs> listeners don't watch the yeah. show. <laughs> I do love Harry biting back there and being like, yeah, you, you just figured this out now. Like, yeah. I, I really like that sort of back and forth they have there. Just so they're telling Ron, Ron, quit being a fucking moron, dude. Yeah. Uh, 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 Hermione has a great line here too where they, they make up and she's like boys you yeah. know she just sees him she's like ah, boys are idiots uh, sorry guys I lost my place here um, shit I really lost my place Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, the next day everyone seems to be back on that Potter train including Cho Chew. Chang Chew. who looks Chew. over with him and just gives him the eyes Chew. and yep. he goes uh, Cho Cho. He goes what? He goes Bleh, and like let's shit spit out of his mouth like a fucking idiot. And I'm like, Harry, you're, you're just. This edition. <laughs> no, That's didn't he? Did. Yeah, he, he oh. smiled and like spilled water totally out that. Like the idiot. same way Greg Miller did one of the first interactions we ever had in this uh, IGN. Exactly. Uh, Ron gets a package <laughs> from his mother, and they think it's a dress for Ginny. But guess what? Hermione, knowing everything, is like, "That's not a dress. That is those are dress robes for the Yule Ball, which will be the first, which is first and foremost a dance." As and we here learn. I fucking am watching yeah. this movie, and I'm like, "All right, it already starts darker. There's no Dursleys. We're getting a tournament, and there's a high school dance." Hell yeah, what a dance. the fuck? Let's oh, yeah. go. We get a fun scene with Professor McGonagall teaching them how to dance. She, of course, picks Ron, and uh, they, there's a great little line where Harry's like, you're never going to let him forget this, are you? And they're like, nope, no, this is, we're taking this one to his grave. Uh, Ron and Harry, uh, of course, or all the boys are embarrassed uh, about this, except Neville, who was like, I'm fucking, this is my thing. I got this. I really come my own. Herbology, dancing, that's me. Those are my two things. I'm Parents tortured. Parents tortured. Parents tortured to, tortured to death. Yeah. Well, into insanity. There you go. How um, long did it take for them to like, write that rock song that that... Shitty rock band was playing. Shitty we'll get to that. Band. We'll get oh. to that because I have a piece of trivia about that. Some of the band. wicked sisters, right? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Do it though. Uh, yeah. Ron and Harry try to strategize as to how to ask girls out, which is impossible because they're always traveling in packs. And they approach a group of Ravenclaws who fucking stare them down, just dress them down. Like, don't even think about it, bro. Even though Harry Potter, you think you have the pick yeah, of the letter. Harry Potter, man. Yeah. Well, Fix your hair, though, but otherwise. Yeah. His hair was great. What are you talking about? Harry Potter? Yeah. Uh, but good. love is in Great the air, life. of course. Uh, Hagrid, we'll talk about we a that fun later. little scene with Hagrid and Madame Maxime. Uh, they're clearly falling in love. The girls are all, all love watching Crumb warm up in a creepily kind of way. They're just kind of following him, and he's just doing weird ass uh, things. But he's only got eyes for Hermione, of course. Uh, yeah, during he does. this next scene, I hate. I just don't like this scene. 
because it's not in the book. I think the scene was in the book, but but Snape doing that the head hitting thing wasn't in the book. It just seemed weird. Oh, when he grabs both their heads. Well, he was like slapping their heads. And I'm like, this is not Snape. Snape wouldn't. Do really, shit. I liked oh, it. Yeah, I thought I it was endearing. This. I yeah. liked it. I don't know. Uh, why. I Ron, thought it went one thing too far. It's where, like, I thought much. when he like pulled his sleeves up, I was like, oh, he's about to fuck them up. And then he just kind of shook them. Just shuck them a little. I um, liked it. It was cute to me. Oh. There, of I course, thought it was cute. Uh, Ron, of course, this is where he asks uh, Hermione on a pity date, and she's like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Somebody yeah. already asked me. Ron, what uh, the fuck? What a dick. I hate him so much. And he says, and I quote, he's like, well, it's one thing for a guy to go alone, but if a girl goes alone, it's just pathetic. And she gets pissed. And she's like, for your information, somebody already asked me out. And I said, yes. So piss off, you fucking little redheaded wanker. <laughs> I added those last couple of No, lines. but he, she should have said it. She, sh- she should have said it. You're a proper uh, wanker, aren't you? Meanwhile, the whole time, uh, uh, Snape is smacking everyone in the head. I'm like, this is child abuse, clearly. Uh, winter time, ladies and gentlemen. Harry, really procrastinating on this, goes up to the hourly owlery and bumps into the one and only Cho Chang. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a second here. Because I had, in the book, they don't explain this. Obviously, the actress that was cast in this had a different accent than, I think, J.K. Rowling, Barrett, you can confirm or deny this, had intended. Because when he starts talking to her and she opens her mouth, we get it. You Scottish love Irish accent. accent. It was Scottish. <laughs> Scottish. Maron. That's all I have to say. Marry me. I mean, you just don't Let me go to the Green Gods you know I mean? vault and get my mom's biggest diamond. Put it on your finger. We get married. Is the relationship going to last? Probably not. We're young. We'll get to 22, 23. Realize we made a huge mistake. You keep the diamond. But we'll have all these great times together. But it's your family's diamond. Well, I mean. It's Harry, your mom's Harry, biggest. I, mean, I never knew my mom. So who cares? You know Good what enough. I mean? Good enough. Like that's on her for dying. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. She died for him. Harry Nick. musters up the courage to ask her out. But of course, it's too late. She's like, sorry, Harry. Sorry, Harry. <laughs> little, little, you're getting it. Get I get that. She's like, somebody already asked me, but I am really, really sorry, Harry. Yeah, like, I would have liked to go with you, but you needed to you be. You sound like the fucking gender on the Sorry, Simpsons. Harry. They've <laughs> <laughs> got oh. the shit in. <laughs> you mean the shit quiet? Good. They want to get sued. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's a good moment at home. That's going to be my Cho Chang from now on. Uh, Harry and Ron make a pact. Like, dude, we're getting dates by the end of the day. I swear to God. But do they get dates? We'll have we'll to find out in just one second. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Andy, how hydrated are you at this I very moment? I feel fantastic, and I wish I had a little bit more to drink so I could explain to you how delicious it is, Tim, mm-hmm. but it's like pretty much all gone. I drink this whole cup throughout this whole show. Could you it's taste delicious. the vitamin C? Uh, no, like I just taste really good berry. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I, I was teeing you up for you to be like, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so it's, it's acai berry. Vi- it's vitamin acai C, one. B3, B5, B6, B12. I've never seen Andy this hydrated. I'm very proud of him. I can't taste them, but I can dewy. feel them. His skin looks moist and dewy. Oh, staying <laughs> properly hydrated is one of the most important factors during the hot summer months. This hot boy summer. Oh, yeah, it's it's continuing. It's a perfect way to stay hydrated while spending more time outdoors. Uh, it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. Um, Andy loves his liquid IV, and I know that you will, too. Right now, you guys can get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use the code KFMS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Website. You go to liquidiv.com and enter code KFMS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's L I Q U I D I V dot com slash KFMS. Get hydrated. Stay hydrated. They also have the one that like puts you to sleep too. Like it helps you with sleeping at night. Oh, you didn't mm-hmm. realize that. You were drinking that one normally. Yeah, right? I didn't realize that. I totally like where it's just misread it. Yeah. Read, read the things, guys, yeah. but stay hydrated. Um, and also, shout out to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Uh, thankfully, there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score. And they offer smarter interest rates to help you pay off high-interest credit card debt. Uh, Greg Miller always talks about his early debt issues. Um, could have been solved with all this. Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score. When assessing your credit worthiness, they actually reward you based on your education and your job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. They make it fast, simple, easy, all the things that you can need to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. And the best part, once your loan is approved, more people get their funds, The most people get their funds the very next business day. Think of all the time you have to get hydrated in that day. It's fantastic. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or just to make a large purchase. You know what I mean? Live your life. I'm not going to judge you. See why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash morning. Upstart.com slash morning. Did they get dates, Nick? 
Later, Ron, of course, gets dragged back into the common room because he was so desperate and stupid, he actually asked Fleur Delacour to the dance. And she was like, nope. Uh, not only will I never date you, sir, now I will never date and or marry someone from your family. Ever. I'll just not do it. Harry sees the Patel twins and gets a very, very bright idea. He's like, there's twins, two of them, two of us. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Let's make hey, some moves. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Ask them out. And they're like, sure, whatever. Yeah. Not uh, twins, <laughs> right? They're just sisters. I think they're, I think they're twins. I think they're twins. Uh, I think, uh, they, they, they are twins, but the, the different difference. Actresses. Oh, but not identical twins, Tim. There's yeah. a difference. They're probably fraternal, fraternal twins. twins. Yeah. In real life, have not you, related have at all. Have you gotten to the scene uh, in the cool. office where they're they're at this wedding and Michael Scott is like talking to a woman, trying to like you know coax her into like dating him or whatever? And then Dwight comes over. He's like, Michael, twins. And Michael's like, Oh my God, really? He's like, I'm sorry, you'll you'll understand. Right. But there's twins. I gotta go. And they go over, and it's just like two bald, like fat dudes sitting down. And Dwight's like, They're glorious, aren't they? <laughs> 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 Wait, have you have you gotten to the the in the one where it starts and uh, it's an Asian dude? It's Randall Parks, isn't it? It is Randall Parks. No. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. you wait Damn. for it, dude. You wait, man. You wait. It's a good the, show. The, the, uh, you know who doesn't have to wait? Harry, because he and Ron go to meet up with the twins, uh, and Ron just looks ridiculous in his dress uh, robes. Uh, Harry sees Cho Chang, who comes, uh, who has arrived with the one and only Cedric Diggory, and he just goes like this, Diggory. I mean, his head he did. He was, like, yeah. pissed off. Yeah. Uh, damn, Twilight kids. Uh, just then, Bavardi sees uh, Hermione at the top of the stairs, and she goes, she looks beautiful. And, of course, Harry thinks he's staring, he's still staring at Joey. He's like, she sure does. And everyone's oh, like, dude, I, get over yourself, man. Yeah, like, you weird. fucked up. And to be fair, like, Bavardi, cute. Like, yeah, 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 like yeah, what yeah, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Cho, Scottish accent. Okay, goat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they pretty much just, like, kills it all. But, like, Bavardi, yeah. No, but saying. he's like totally into Hermione here. Like we What? No, he was talking about Cho at that moment. No, oh. see, she was looking at Hermione, she goes, yeah. She looks beautiful. He's Which looking I, at Cho and goes, She sure does. He doesn't he's not paying Hermione. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Oh, care. I totally mis I totally misunderstood that scene. Yeah. When, when Hermione's walking down the yeah. stairs no, with the yeah, dress. He was on, looking at Cho. Parvati sees oh. him and goes and goes, Oh, she looks yeah, beautiful, but it. he's still staring Further at the Furthering the point that I thought he was looking nothing, at Hermione being like, Oh my god. Nothing yeah, between she is. Hermione and him ever on either side. They line up for the champion processional and we see Hermione is gone uh, with I'm none other than Victor Crumb, which all the girls are like, Are you fucking kidding me? Great reveal. And it's a great reveal. Suck it, everybody. the champions get their first dance and Harry's pretty just bad at this but everyone including Neville is the first to just jump in because he's super into it uh, let's see uh, he can't take his eyes off Cho uh, later that night or Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall come into dance as is Neville and Neville's just baller status in this whole thing because mm -hmm. guess who he takes with him Well, Ginny he was like hey Ron what's up I'm gonna take a little sister for a little, either, for a little stroll you know what good for him Super tall. She's super short. It works out. Uh, later that night, we get a glimpse of uh, how young wizards really get down when the parents go to sleep because uh, courtesy of the Weird Sisters, a band made it's up. It's the Wicked Sisters? No, no, it's bad. the Weird it's Sisters. the Weird Damn. Sisters. Spelled with a Y. A band evidently made up of, and Tim, maybe the, you can, you can mm -hmm. fact check me on this, members of Pulp and, and Radiohead. Radiohead. Mm -hmm. Not impressed by that, Andy? What does impress you? Okay. It was a shitty song. Good Charlotte. And, st and another one of their pop punk bands. Sting. <laughs> Sting. My Chemical <laughs> Romance. <laughs> All right. The rock band at the Eagle Ball is comprised mostly of members of Pulp and Radiohead. In the run-up to the movie, a Canadian folk group called The Weird Sisters filed a $40 million lawsuit against Warner Brothers. Uh, Jarvis Cocker from Pulp and Johnny Go Greenwood and Phil Sellers no, I mean, I was Radiohead confused. for the use of their group's name. Thanks, cool, In the book, the band is called the Weird Sisters, weird spelled normally, uh, after the witches in William Shakespeare's Macbeth, but was reportedly renamed the Weird Sisters with a Y. W I R D for this film. Before the movie was released, Why? however, Warner Brothers removed all references to either names that for was the really band. Confusing. Uh, of course, Ron and Harry sit out the dancing because they're both just like, damn, we screwed up by taking these twins. And the twins are like, fuck you guys. Yeah, like, this really is the worst. Up. You guys are fucked up. You're the worst dates possible. Someone comes up and asks uh, Padma if she'll dance. She's like, hell yeah. I don't even know who you are. I've never seen you before in my life. But we are now together. This is it. Because mm -hmm. I got to get away from this little this little Ron kid. Uh, uh, Hermione comes by and Ron and Hermione get into it. Uh, he's clearly jealous. He's like, Crumb is just too old for you. And he's just using you. And she he, fires. He's on the enemy's team and shit. Well, yeah, he's, like, here, he's just using shit. you. It's like mind control. He's like, he can't possibly love you. Uh, and of course, she fires back. She's like, listen, motherfucker. The next time there's a dance, pluck up the courage and ask me yourself. And not as a last resort. And then she goes, and off to bed with the both of you. <laughs> just straight up sends them to bed. Yeah. And they, they, were, they were already going that way. No, they right? listen. They're like, she wants to go to bed. We're going to go to bed. Also, Ron, like the idiot he is, is just like, what? this has nothing to do with that. 
He's what like, you, oh, where, what? women. What this is, is that crazy. Coming from? Girls are crazy. What is she talking about? She's like, fuck you, Rod. You ruined everything. Yeah. And she cries in the stairwell. Not a good scene for her. And then she goes and makes out with what's his face. Oh, she. Do you think she went immediately? The victim was like. Tonight's the night. Mm -hmm. I am. We know for a fact that that's it's not like what the, happened. It's like the casino night in the office. It, it was over the it, over too young summer. To be doing over the summer they kissed for the first time, but that's. Uh, that story. night, Harry has another nightmare back in the cemetery. This time, uh, though, we we, uh, we go back to the little statue. It's covered with snow, so we know it's this season. Uh, then we see uh, Barty Crouch with a dark mark on his arm. Uh, Baby V tries to kill Harry one more time, <laughs> and then Harry wakes the up. Funky punch, dude. <laughs> Baby V and the funky <laughs> punch. <laughs> Someone make that shirt immediately. Harry wakes up to Neville, who just got. And he's like he's super excited, but he's like, man, this is like the first good night of my entire life. And Harry, like the self-absorbed asshole that he is, just was like, good for you, dude. I'm dreaming about people killing me. I feel like we he did it problems. in like a good spirited way. Like, good for you, dude. I hope you you and Ginny make it. No, nah. well, we'll see about that. Uh, Harry and Hermione are next day are on the bridge. She chides him for not having figured out the egg yet. She's like, I thought you told me you figured that out months ago. He's like, dude, I'm dumb. Okay, I was lying. Without <laughs> you, I'm dumb. Uh, she tells uh, Harry that Victor. Uh, he's like, how's it going, with Victor? She's like, yeah, he's more of a physical guy. I'm more of a thinker. He's mm. more of just like a, but you know, he's got a hard body. You start, you start getting stuff. the uh, the sort of vibes of Harry being like, so uh, what's up? Her no, being like, not ah. at all. No, 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 no. I mean, like the vibes of like. Hey, so uh, this Victor guy oh, must okay, be great, yeah, and her yeah. being like, "Ah, oh, well, you know, oh, you know those are great, but you know, uh, you know, it's, it's <laughs> oh, you, I, I got the total opposite where she was like, "Yeah, we don't really talk, you know, we're doing other shit, you know what I'm saying?" I got both. I got, but, <laughs> uh, but you, do, you, you do get the vibe that she's like, he's not, he's not stimulated. Yeah, he's kind of stupid. He's kind of an idiot. But whatever. But he's got well, a good body. Ron's so. any better? Yeah, I mean, they're all dumb. Yeah. Again, they're all stupid. He, he should have. Ma she should have married uh, Victor. Uh, let's see. Of course, that's when uh, Cedric Diggory comes in to interrupt, and he gives Harry the most cryptically stupid message possible. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, just even it out for me. What does it say? Mer people. Great. Well, I told you. I didn't tell you the things in the sky come up to eat you. Figure it the fuck out. I told you dragons. One word. You could only yeah. mer people. I'll be like, oh, done. Shit. Yeah. Hey, but don't even fuck with the egg. Mer people. One I hour. That's it. But then we wouldn't get a cool scene, which we do next. He tells him to go up to. He's like, I hear the prefix bathroom is a good place to take a bath. You're not allowed up there. You're probably going to get in trouble. But get up there, take all your clothes off, and let old morning Myrtle look at your junk trap. He gets up there. What a, like a weird, vulnerable thing to go do, by it's the very way. Yeah. Like, just go take a sh take a bath in a place where like anybody could walk in it anymore. We're not weird. supposed to Well, not be. anybody. Yeah. It's just yeah. the prefix. Uh, Harry, of course, follows got in somehow. Now, I will say this. The bath looks cool because it pours out colored water, which is a fun little um, production trick. Uh, Harry runs the bath and uh, is like, I don't know what's going on. He opens the thing and still yelling at him. Morning Myrtle's like, you're an idiot. Just do what the other kid did. Put it under the water and dip your head under there. Maybe you and let me see it in the water. Shut the fuck up, dude. Uh, so much better than your snake. It sucks. You got it. Like, hey. You nailed it. Expelliarmus. <laughs> God. Expelliarmus. You got worse again. <laughs> no, I feel like you were doing better in the start of the episode. Mr. Potter. Well, well, well. I love the idea of the sirens and the mer people and underwater shit. It's like, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's actually a cool way to unlock yeah. that, that clue. Now, fun little trick here, though. Uh, he listens to it and it says, come seek us. Where, vo where our voices sound, we cannot sing above the ground, and now alone, you'll have to look to recover what we took, but there are, in fact, more lines to that. And we hear one of them in the following scenes because it actually outlined that you only have an hour. No, in that, I think you just messed up one of the lines you read there. It, in the thing, it says an hour long, you have to look to recover what mm. we took. So My apologies, you you're right. That. You are correct. Um, look it up, though, because I think it's longer than that. I think it was like three or four more lines in the book. Doesn't matter. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, figures out there's mer. He's like, is there mer people in the lake? And she's like, yeah, dude, you figured it out. What are we gonna do now? Take a little load off. Take a little load off. You want a little stress relief? A little stress and relief. And and the thing is, you're not pushing this sexual joke. This is very clear that no, she's in it. She, like, she's, a, she's a forty year old. Woman she makes who has no bones needs. about it, dude. Mm -hmm. She's like a middle aged mm -hmm. milf. She, yeah. So, but an hour's passed. Prospects black. Too late. It's gone. It won't come back. So there was a couple more lines in this in the book than there was uh, there, but not needed. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, da -da 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 Mo. Okay. So Harry's then, of course, um, uh, in the uh, library trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Uh, the thing's like in like an hour and a half or whatever. And Harry's like, I'm I'm dead. Uh, he's strategizing with Hermione. Uh, worth no, uh, let's see. Uh, Moody comes over to interrupt them. He tells Hermione to go to bed. And then he calls Neville over. He's like, why don't you help Harry put his books away? And Neville starts talking about plants and shit. And Harry's like, dude, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to die tomorrow. There's mer people. Unless you have a and plant. And you assume they look like the Little Mermaid. And they don't. No. They're scary as fuck. Scary. They're terrifying creatures that yeah, we let just live out them. there. They should be exterminated with fucking extreme prejudice. That seems All I'm like saying, some. Burn the lake with fire. Some Voldemort shit. They're terrifying. 
Of course, uh, he's like, uh, listen, dude, I don't care. Unless you know of a Tibetan turnip that will help me breathe underwater, I'm fucked. And Neville's like, I don't know about Tibetan turnips, but Gillyweed should do the trick. And he's like, genius. What's Gillyweed? How do we get it? Uh, the second task is on, and Ron and Hermione are nowhere to be found. He's like, my friends suck. Uh, Dumbledore t- assess the stakes. Something's been stolen from you. You got one hour to get it back. Uh, Moody's like, put that Gillyweed in your mouth, man. What the fuck are you doing? How, long, can- how long between the water, the mermaid shit, and the dragon shit went by? Months. Yeah, it was months. Why? It's a whole school year. Yeah, because they're it's, still yeah. studying their school. It's shit. like the end of the semester thing. It just seems like a like it should be a track meet, like yeah, all one no, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, well, uh, no, you gotta imagine you have you need well, you time have to, to recover. Figure out, yeah, you have to figure, figure recovery, it out. You have to figure out the clues. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's meant to test like all your aspects of being a wizard. And Underwater they, scenes were shot in a huge tank with a blue screen background. That's not Divers what you're asking, Tim. Were on hand with <laughs> air tanks to allow the actors to stay <laughs> submerged for long periods of time. Good job, Tim. Daniel Radcliffe alone logged nearly 42 minutes underwater. Good for him. The whole time, just all of his breath. Yeah. It's incredible. No, they had, they had dudes come down networks. with like air. Them, like no, like yeah, I know. We got that from what so you just do, said. Um, I was making a joke. So, d- okay, so Durmstrang and Bo Batten, do they all stay there at yeah. Yeah. They stay learning? In school. Well, they live in there. They're like boat yeah. and carriage. Yeah. 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 So and they're, they're, they're much bigger inside. Really and inconvenient. because of the rules, it's only like uh, you can only be 17 or older. So it's only the seventh years. So you have to imagine like the rest of the school is got still it, back at the castle. Except for her sister, right? Yeah, f- like I think the sister was in Gabrielle. She was her plus sister. one. She got- <laughs> yeah, like she wasn't old enough to be in school yet. I think was the oh. thing. Oh, so, so she just stole out like- of her crib. Awesome. Yep. Uh, just, I feel like the momentum of this whole thing would have like months later. Like, oh, so who won that thing? Oh, it's still going actually. Like, oh fuck. Okay, well, yeah, well, it's like the like World Cup went on for like eight months. <laughs> yeah, so like, oh, I don't really, I don't really care, care anymore. anymore. Uh, of course, Moody makes him swallow the gillyweed and then throws his ass into the water. Harry chokes at first and then grows some gills, and everyone's like, shit. And then Neville's like, shit, I killed Harry. Potter and then Harry flies out of the water just like that scene from Hunt for October where they're like they get they bridge out of the water and the guy's watching on the boat he goes he goes the captain's chasing him out of the water it's awesome great scene you guys should watch that movie I am the nice captain now I am the captain now um Harry heads down into the abyss where he sees the mer people and they start kind of fucking with him a little bit and then he sees Floor and I'm not quite sure what happens to the floor because I took my eyes off the screen for one second but apparently she freaked out and went back up at the, this point the, the grindy the grindy lows like took her over like she couldn't deal with the grandilos. What's a grandilos? It, it, it's little those like little things. weird things that like all come after Harry when Harry. You know, I thought those like, were the mer people. No, the, the no, little the tiny are things are grandilos. The mer people are the women with the spears. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they look like they all the same. Like Ariel mixed with Aquaman. Yeah. 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 No, okay. the, uh, the, the, uh, little, the squid people are different. Those are the ones that should be killed with extreme The fire. little tiny yeah. things, they reminded me of, um, <laughs> uh, they reminded me of the aliens in, uh, in Galaxy Quest. The little oh, tiny yeah, aliens. there you go. That's a good yeah. one. Or the, yeah, cute, the really cute alien in Men in Black, where it's like, it's cute, and then it spits on him, he goes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the octopus head. You guys are spot on, both yeah. of you. We are crushing this. Fucking guys, uh, all right, get out of here. Harry comes uh, it comes to where, let's see, oh, Harry uh, comes over a little bend and sees finally what they have stolen from him, and it is uh, Ron. They've stolen Ron from him. Why they didn't steal Hermione from him is, I guess, telling. Maybe they no, stole that they from had Crumb. To- they had to only, yeah, right? Like, yeah. that's the only thing Crumb cared about. That's true. Other that, or maybe they could have stolen his abs. He's got to get those back. That's all he's got. Um, let's see. Uh, we see, he sees Cho. He sees uh, a little girl that we don't know who she is, but we assume she's uh, Fleur's sister. Uh, Harry releases Ron uh, as Cedric comes up and, and uh, grabs Cho. And then he goes, hey, man, time, get up there. Bounces out. Uh, Right, he looks over to go release uh, Hermione, and uh, the Mer people stop him, and they're like, "No, only one, only one." And he's like, "Why? I can't fucking take them both. Like, I'll be baller status." And like, "Wow!" And he's like, "All right, fuck it." And then uh, Crumb comes out with a shark head, which is awesome. Bites the rope and like and pulls Hermione up. And then uh, as as Harry starts going up, he looks over and he sees the Gabrielle uh, or Gabriella rather has not been saved. And he's like, "Well, someone's got to save her." Fuck these Mer people again. Maybe Nick's right. Kill them all. Kill them all. Burn them all. Right. Cuts her loose, like does a cool little explode, whatever the hell Ron thing. Cuts her loose, starts floating up, and as he gets about, well, we'll call it what, like 10, 10 meters maybe from the surface. Yeah. Uh, the squid things start attacking him, and he lets Ron and and Gabrielle float up, and they float up, and they wake up, like what the fuck happened? And then he starts, he, he starts getting dragged down, and he goes, it's pretty all over. And they, he's losing his powers. Too, he's losing yeah. his powers too, because the gilly starting to wear off, and he just blasts those things into eternity. He did stupefy like, things. Stupefy, yeah, that's what it was. And it, and it is stupefy. And they all went, ooh. And it's like, I for like her that. people, apparently it just gets you high as fuck. Because yeah. they're like, oh, it's we're like going to go party. <laughs> it is like catnip. Uh, Harry, of course, uh, then goes, what was it, Axio or Ascensio or whatever the hell it is? I got mm, to read just read no. my stupid. Ascendio. 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 That's it. Uh, and Another pops thing where it's like, hey, Hogwarts, all right, not only are we going to put a lot of our students in danger, um, part of the goal of the second game is going to be putting even more students in danger. Yeah. And if you don't save them, 
they dead. That, now, but that's not the case. They, they, they aren't. Yeah, they don't clarify in the movie, but in the book, that it's like they were never really in danger. Yeah, they the, the other kids weren't. They but were like, cool. when they come out, it's great they, they made that clear. Yeah, when they come out in in the books, they're like, uh, "Wait, why'd you save her?" And he's like, "Well, she was gonna die." And it's like, "Oh no, 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 no one was, no one was yeah. in danger." Yeah. But but of they course, she's fine. Know. None of the people competing knew that. So like, Fleur so in the book them. is still like, "Oh my God, you saved her." Of course, in this, you have to assume in this that they haven't explained this to Fleur either because she's like, "You saved my little sister. I'm gonna give you a sweet little double kiss," and then gives a double kiss to Ron. And Ron's like, "Yeah, I did some shit too. I don't do anything, but Ron is into it." Cedric won, but Harry gets second place. What does he say when she gets kissed? Is it, ooh la la, he's like, something like that. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. Mer- mercy or something like that. Oh, mercy. Mercy oh, beaucoup. Like, why does she look so stupid, dude? God bless so him. good at everyone, but you're great. Give me like, a pot again, Mr. Pata. Mr. Pata. He's got that weird, like, over the Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus. <laughs> <laughs> Harry gets second, of course, for outstanding moral fiber, which is weird. Like, can Dumbledore make up the rules here? I don't know. Oh, man. No, because he's not the only like judge. A bunch of decide. judges in like the in the book decide on this. Okay. Like Barty Crouch Senior or no, uh, someone else who who Barty Crouch Senior isn't at this event in the book and stuff. So he's there's missing. a whole there's a whole panel oh, that right. like decides on this. It's not just Dumbledore. <laughs> it's a bunch of Gryffindors. Uh, Crouch of course pulls him aside to congratulate him, and they go for a little bit of walk together. And he and he uh, he empathizes with Harry. He's like to lose one's family is a sad thing, and he's like I've lost some people too. Moody of course stops to talk immediately shit to him, and then does this little weird thing with his tongue with it. And only Barty sees it, and Barty's like, what the fuck? Because my kid used to do that. And then he went just, instead of immediately being like, wait, who are you? I'm very powerful. He walks off into the forest. Yeah, I gotta and go. That's the last time go. we've seen him. Uh, cut two, of course, Hagrid walks with Harry and Ron, and they celebrate his achievement. Like, this is pretty cool, man. You might actually come out of this alive. Maybe win this thing. And Harry's like, cool. And then, of course, Harry comes across, crouches dead body, and is like, god damn it. Can I have one day, one day with this shit? No other kids have to discover dead bodies. Why am I the only one? It's true. Always me. Getting fucking... Attacked by giant spiders and flying cars and shit. Yeah. I think the flying car helped. It's true. But then the flying car went to a car party and they didn't invite <laughs> Harry. And it was like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Uh, Harry's called the Dumbledore's office where Dumbledore is trying to convince uh, Cornelius Fudge to cancel the tournament. And they have a great little back and forth here where Fudge is like, you know, it's in times like these the wizarding community looks to its leaders for strength. And Dumbledore goes, then for once, show them some. Oh, ah, sick! Yeah. Because one burn. does the, one does what's right, no matter what. Uh, he's like basically like you gotta do what's right, no matter what others think. That's a real leader. And Fudge is like, well, I'm not. I'm a politician. Uh, Moody interrupts to say that the conversation is no longer between just them because Harry's back there, but his, his eye can see through the wall, which is cool. He's like, ee, ee, he's a cool eye. mechanical like witch eye. Uh, Dumbledore walks Cornelius Fudge out, leaving Harry, and uh, tells me he can have a little uh, licorice nap, but be careful they bite. Which I thought was fun. Harry, of course, tries to eat one, and then they start biting him, and he starts stomping. Just so everyone knows, Nick winked at me when he said that. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Accidentally falls into uh, toward the pensive, and he looks down into it, which looks a lot like uh, where they used to dispense the holy water at my Catholic church. Yep. Uh, looks down into it, and fall is gets sucked into one of Dumbledore's memories. Uh, he is at a tribunal where they're hearing uh, the testimony from Igor Karkaroff. Uh, who was convi- who was a convicted Death Eater, and they're like, basically, if you give us some names, we'll let you go, or we'll let you off with a warning, I guess, because maybe you weren't that bad of a Death Eater. And he starts giving them names, like, well, that dude's dead, and we already have the other guy's name. And Moody's like, yeah, I know that motherfucker. He took a piece of me, but I took more of him with me. Uh, the next name he brings up, of course, is Snape, to which Dumbledore immediately defends. He's like, we knew he was a double agent. He was a Death Eater, but he turned good. He did good for us, so he's a double agent, so he's off the table. We're not touching him. Uh, finally... There's one name he can give him, uh, so because he, he doesn't want to go back to Azkaban because it's terrifying there. He gives him the final name, uh, which uh, he's the guy responsible for torturing the Or Frank Longbottom, Neville's dad, uh, by means of the Crucius Curse. Is none other Cruci- Crucius Curse is none other than Barty Crouch Jr. And of course, Barty Crouch wow. Jr. is already trying to sneak the fuck out. He's like, ah, he's gonna call it's me a out. Sneaky snake boy. And they all stop him, and his dad's just like, oh, this totally sucks. This is no good. Um, I feel like it would have been a lot better if he didn't. Start walking out and fight everyone. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, and he had just been chilling there and been like, "What? This shit makes no sense. Yeah, I didn't I'm not do that. evil." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really he does quick. the tongue thing, and that's when we know he's moody. Tim, what, how did you feel about that Snape reveal? Because I feel like there's a really big reveal in the series, and they just kind of gloss over it. Of like Snape was once a Death Eater. But I mean, you could tell, right? Dude, the- it's not that you. I thought th- this was another one of those scenes. I'm like, this is fucking cool. Right. Like the Neville Longbottom dad drop in, like all this stuff. Like the way that they're and building this. I'm like, this what's, is. Yeah, rad. what's awesome, and this is what, what I love about the series is that the characters that you originally thought, you're like, oh, Longbottom, he's just going to be this jokey kid. So it's getting flushed out, and you start learning his backstory. You're like, damn, then it he's gets hot. Tragic. Yeah. And yeah, then it gets hot Longbottom. It is just, it's just such a disappointment then when there's like other characters. I'm like, ah, it could have been better if he was you. Like Cedric in this movie, I feel like should have been in the other movies. 
Uh, yeah. he, 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 they had introduced a bit him more. in like Azkaban and stuff like that. So there's a little bit. More. Oh, was he? Only a little bit. But okay. uh, I mean, they, I think just anything would have helped. Like just, oh, he's introduced yeah. and now he's dead. Yeah. Uh, of course, Harry see like there's a little Future tongue spoilers, thing. Future spoilers. He does little tongue things. You're like, oh, he's doing the tongue thing too. That's weird. Moody does tongue thing. Moody's also drinking this thing. We've already alluded to some making apologies potion because Myrtle was like, I thought I saw some apologies potion in the thing. You think Harry would have put two and two together no, without we, Hermione? He can't use s- his fucking brain. Yeah. You skip this scene where Snake tape. Snape, yeah, Snape takes is like, what's up, dog? And is like, yo, what's up, dog? We, we haven't right gotten there this. yet. Oh, was it? Oh, yep. my bad. I'm sorry. Uh, he comes out of the dream to find Dumbledore watching him, and he Dumbledore explains what the pensive is, pensive is. Uh, he says, it's a place where you can store your memories in case your mind is uh, stretched a bit thinly like mine is these days. Uh, Dumbledore is trying to figure out what all this madness is as of late, uh, and Harry asks about Barty Crouch Jr., and he goes, he was sent to ask a man. Harry tells Dumbledore about the dream he had about Barty Crouch Jr., and Dumbledore tells him it's unwise to linger on these dreams. Best if you just simply cast them away, uh, which is terrible advice. Because it's like, no, dude, well, you had a dream. Like, last time I had... Was the scene shit? Like, I didn't tell you. You told me to tell you. I'm telling you now. You're useless. Dumbledore making the wrong decisions here. Uh, of course, Harry catches Igor and Snape uh, comparing Death Eater tattoos. And he's like, it's happening again. You know what that means. And Snape is like, get the fuck out of here, man. Okay, get out of here. And he looks over at Harry and brings it back in. He's like, congratulations uh, on the Gillyweed thing, but uh, why are you stealing my shit? Accuses him of stealing stuff. Harry's like, I didn't steal anything. He goes, I'm going to find out you stole some stuff. And then I'm going to fuck you up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third and final trial is on, ladies and gentlemen. It's a giant maze, a bush maze. Don't they, they introduce the truth serum here? Oh, he does. Veritism. I apologize. Veritism. Veritism. Yes, he was like, he's Veritism. like, do you know what this is? What is it? Veritaserum. Veritaserum. If a couple drops this, might slip into your drink. All of a sudden, backwards. And even, all of a sudden. It's not. He's fucking. It is. Him. I am truth. No, in Spanish. Lord truth. In wow. Spanish. I am Lord Voldemort. <laughs> uh, the third and final trial is a giant, huge maze that is vast and scary as shit. Uh, since Harry and Cedric are tied for first, not sure how that math works out. Uh, they can enter, uh, followed by Crumb, and then Floor. If at any point a contestant wishes uh, to exit, they, I mean, you feel like Harry beat uh, the dragon he, in the in the quickest time. Right? Did he? I think so. Is that what it was? Yeah. I, I think they talk about that in the book. Not the movie. Well, yeah, but he was just asking how yeah. he tied for first, and that's yeah. how. I should know how the points ranked up because Harry got second in the last one, and we don't know who scored first <clears> in the first <throat> one. So that makes more sense. Um, since they got first, they get to go in first. Uh, if any of the contestants at any point wish to exit, they need only send up a red smoke, and one of the professors uh, patrolling the, the, the perimeter will fuck up the maze and come and get you. So, what happened to Floor? Because it looked like she got eaten by the plants. Remember oh, no, she no. Okay. She remember she was fine. We saw her. Oh. So she did. Harry broke her free and then popped red smoke for her on her behalf and then ran, which you think would be like the maze would be like, no, Harry did it. Harry but did Harry it. did it no, on her fine. behalf. Yeah. Popped red smoke and then the maze closed. In. So basically the maze, once you do that, presumably either the maze or the professors blow that part out and come and get you and, and save awesome. you. And then the rest of it follows back behind. I just thought it was so weird that it's like, all right, you're going to get face off against dragons. Then you might drown. But then this one goes, makes you go crazy. But yeah, it changes you. But that's you not, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it in a little bit of yeah. what they changed from the maze. Uh, I love, by the way, I love the sound design in the scene. Cause you hear, bam, mm-hmm. ba-da-da, ba-da-da, and then it closes behind him and it's quiet. Yeah. You don't hear the band anymore, even though you should hear the band through the bushes, but that's the magic of this thing. And it pulls out and it's just fucking vast. And you have to imagine they were in that scene for hours. It's horrifying. Trying to figure out how to get through there. And that's when you start losing your shit. And of course, the maze has like, does things to you. It's got other properties. Of course, we already talked about Fleur getting sucked in and Harry goes to help her. Crumb comes by and points the wand at him. And he's got white eyes. He's, he's clearly gone crazy. Harry keeps, uh, continues back. And uh, it turns out this maze was in fact uh, the inspiration for the game Fortnite because if too much time goes by, the maze just starts closing in on you and you have to run. And as he runs back, he runs right in smack dab into the middle of um, uh, Cedric and Crumb fighting each other. Crumb has lost his shit. Cedric... Uh, Takes his wand, uh, takes his wand out, or disarms him rather, uh, and then he's about to kill him because he's going a little crazy too. And Harry's like, "Stop! Look! Look at his eyes! He's gone crazy!" And he's like, uh, "He's uh, bewitched! Uh, he's, he's bewitched!" Um, Which would be great if we knew what that meant, you know. Well, in the last bewitched. three movies Come we watched, on. he's bewitched. Why you can so extrapolate. Why are you so mad all of a sudden? Why are you so mad? You like the movie? I do, but this scene just like it, it was sucks the, it so was far the apart. Curse. But like again, like. They haven't. I, I understand you, Tim. Of like, they haven't built the idea of bewitching other people at all, at all in these movies. But again, they explain some yeah. of it. In, it just, um, he looks, just looks like a like an old blind crazy. dog. Extrapolate. Uh, they both spot the cup ahead of them, and, and Cedric gets. Uh, they start running at each other, or, or running with each other. Cedric gets caught up by the maze and starts to get dragged under. And he calls yelling. out to Harry for help, and Harry has a moment where he's like, mm, "All right." 
And I'm just like, I say let the Hufflepuff die, personally speaking. I'm like, hey, we don't need more Hufflepuff. Shoot up the flares. They'll Shoot figure the it flare, out. They'll you know? figure it out. Uh, but instead, bada bada he cuts him loose but and kills he's got to be a fucking hero, uses a reducto and blasts Cedric free. And then he's like, for a moment there, I thought you were going to let me uh, g- let me go. And he's like, for a moment there, I thought I was too. I thought I was going to let you die. Uh, suddenly, the maze begins closing in on them once again, and they dash toward the cup. And just because they're homies, and it's like Hogwarts for everything, Hogwarts for life, you know what I mean? They're like, let's grab it together. Let's both win this thing together. We'll both get the papers together. We'll both be sexy. I'll be a little taller. And he's like, great. Let's do it. Yeah, it's, second, like when, it's like in the Olympics when someone like tears their ACL, and then they go back for him, and then it like makes like a viral video on Twitter where like they're, they're you know, the cry. healthy person. The and part, I cry. You know, yeah, that's a good they video. They go back, two people get yeah, him Yeah, the there's, been, there's been videos of like mm-hmm. people getting hurt, and they're like uh-huh. about to finish, and they're like, they're on the ground, and then like the person that was about to win comes back and like lift some and they all run together wow. yeah and as soon as they get to the finish line pushes them down <laughs> cross just trips them <laughs> just judo trips them uh, of course the second they touch that damn thing it is a port key and it transports them over to that same graveyard Harry has been uh, uh, dreaming about it doesn't he doesn't realize it at first until he looks up and reads the gravestone and realizes that it's Thomas Riddle's gravestone and he looks around and he's like shit I've seen this before we gotta get, we the, gotta fuck get the fuck out of here out, dude. right now and of course who should come out none other than baby V and the funky bunch at least half of them uh, <laughs> held by Wormtail and he's this incredible little buddy he's like kill the spell <laughs> and he's like run dude this is fucking baby V but the, he's still powerful the weirdest thing is that like kill I forgot I forgot Ray Fiennes was in this movie. Uh-huh. I uh, because I, I just like forgot the end of this for some reason. But when it's Baby so V and it's voiceover, my initial thought was like, "Oh, that, yeah, that's not Ray Fiennes. I mm-hmm. get it. They didn't bring him in for this movie yeah. until like he actually popped out. I was like, "Oh, that was Ray Fiennes' voice. Why did mm-hmm. it sound so different than the actual?" So his name is Ralph Fiennes. Ralph Fiennes, sorry. It's okay. spelled Ralph, but it's pronounced Rafe. Really? Yeah. Rafe. Mm-hmm. Rafe. Oh, I was saying Ray because I thought you said Ray no, earlier. Rafe. Rafe. I don't know why. It's just one of the. Remember when we did that pronunciation thing yeah. a long time ago? He was one of the names on it. Whoa. But it's spelled Ralph. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally right. Fiennes is spelled F I E N N E S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're weird. The, the Brits do everything all weird over there ap- across the pond. Uh, they, they, uh, Wormtail uses the uh, Avada Kedavra curse and just nukes Cedric. Nukes and it's him. like, it's especially sad because of how just insignificant he did it. It's like unceremonious. Yeah, it's yeah. totally unceremonious. He's just, he, Carrie just looks down and he's fucking dead. There's no saving him. And as a, when you read that in your book, you're like, what? Yeah. And like, I had to go back and read it again. One of the things that I don't like about this is that it like blasts him back. When a, you get Avada Kedavra in the book, you just fall, drop, and yeah. like I feel like that would have been more significant and scary to see that in the. Mm. Uh, but movie. I feel like the way he drops is perfect to like. He just looks like all of a sudden he was dead. Yep. Uh, Wormtail then pins Harry to the Grim Reaper statue and then dumps Baby V right into the cauldron with that scene that Andy loves. This is Andy's favorite. Um, he pulls a bone from Thomas Riddle's <laughs> grave, uh, Thomas C. Riddle Sr.'s grave, uh, cuts his own hand off, and then draws blood Dude, from Harry's arm. Not only does he do all that stuff, he's saying it all, like all yeah. the, like, you need the bone from the this and the this and the that. Unwillingly given. And uh, the taken, fucking, taken. Un, what was the, how, what were the, the phrase there? Uh, 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 are you talking about the just whole Just for the thing? Harry it's bit. Bone uh, of the father, un, like, No, blood from the enemy um, forcibly taken. <laughs> what? Yeah. Also, I love that it was like, he cut his whole hand off yeah. and just a little sliver of blood, like tiny little cut for it's Harry. All he needed, yeah. man, it was Harry. It was blood. a good gash, man. And, and the, the Dark, dark Lord. Gash. And with that, the Dark Lord shall rise again. And this scene is and beat me in Nidhogg hard. too, because he like the cauldron like turns into him. The whole yeah. thing just morphs yeah. into him. It was really rad. And finally, we I see love him, that he comes and he up. Does the, <sighs> and it, yeah, it like just kind of like goes from just being this like weird Matrix placenta shit into like. Turning into a human form, mm-hmm. it looks so cool. Smooth as a baby. The cauldron snake, turns man. into smoke and then turns yep. into his cloak, and, and it's like just like the weird screaming wow. that's happening at the same time. It's no, I love crazy. it. And of course, it was the- that Harry screaming? No, that was like the spell happening at the at that time. Mm. Uh, first thing, of course, he asks for is his wand, and Wormtail uh, obliges and gives him that dope ass bone. Like claw one that he's got. I don't know. We gotta look at it. Uh, and he's like, uh, "Give me your arm." And Wormtail's like, "Yeah." He's like, "No, motherfucker, the other arm. I don't give a shit about the one you just cut off." And he taps the Death Eater tattoo, which, by the way, Tim, if you don't know, is how you call the Death Eaters to yeah. you. Yeah. And you then they tap all, it, and it burns no everyone choice. else. They have to come. 
Holy shit. No, they don't have to come. They have a choice. I think they have to come. No, no, no Snape doesn't no, come. No, they don't because um, Snape, neither would, Snape oh, or right, Parker. Right. They feel but it, it burns and like that is the signal. Like you have to come the right now. The bat signal. Yeah. Uh, and so just, sick. Yeah, and get the way they this, appear dude. is awesome. It's you want everybody to get involved. <laughs> no, just people I care about. A Death Eater tattoo. Asked you. You've always told Cool Greg, I guess. Yeah. That's all you know, for a guy that's been gone for 13 years, you feel like he's like, hey, everyone, good to see you. No, he's like, I'm just fucking disappointed in all of you. 13 years I've been gone, and not one of you looked for me. And now, yeah, here's the thing, you guys. I know that it might be the most obvious thing to everybody, and it should have been obvious to me. But when, when they're fucking there, there's all these guys around <laughs> them, and they're like, crab, blah, 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 goil, goil, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, no, they are not. <laughs> Malfoy. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. those motherfuckers, oh, the dads? Yeah. Death what? Haters, dude, and he pulls Malfoy's mask off. Oh my god. Like dude. using yeah. magic? Yeah. And he goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. And he no, looks you at didn't. Harry and he's like, huh. <laughs> I, I was like marking out, man. Like, I, it was so stupid. Hell, I should have fucking known that. Yeah. How obvious was How that? How good was but, it? But man, it was real cool. cool. Of course, Wormtail's like, dude, I returned for you. He's like, out of fear, dude, not loyalty. Like, mm-hmm. we all know. But you know, you have been useful, so I'm going to give you a dope ass liquid metal hand, like the, <laughs> like the T1000 from T2, which is a movie we're going to watch in this series later uh, this year. Uh, in this exact scene. And then, of course, Voldemort's like, oh, what's up, Harry? You're what's still up, here, huh? Harry? How you doing, buddy? Oh, another great line. Oh, I nearly forgot you were still yeah, here. I don't know. Nearly. The <laughs> boy who lived is what he oh. calls him. Shall I reveal what really happened that night when I lost my powers? He's like, it wasn't you, motherfucker. It was love. He was like, your mother loved you. And she and uh, when Lily Potter gave her life for her son, she, pro- she provided the ultimate protection. It was old magic, something I should have foreseen. Uh, he, but he's like, but don't worry about that and head out, Harry, because I can touch you now. And as he gets closer, Harry's scar starts burning. He touches his forehead, and as Harry starts screaming, he starts screaming too. He's like, ah! <laughs> and it's fucking scary it's so as shit. Good. It's so it's funny because so like, I loved this scene. It was so rad. But there's something about you reenacting it that <laughs> it takes terrifying. all of it away from it. It's <laughs> it reminds me of like, it. have you guys seen the Star Wars robot chicken stuff with yeah. the Emperor? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nick's turning <laughs> Voldemort into that. <laughs> I'll take it. I think he was in one of those. Uh, he left Harry loose. Oh, no, he was in the Lego movie. That's what he was, wasn't he? At some point, it was in Voldemort. Uh, he lets Harry loose. He's like, come on, Larry. Harry, pick up your wand. Time to duel. Just like we were in school. Uh, he makes so Harry... So scary. B- and then he uses the, the, the curse, and he makes him bow. Like he's oh like torturing God. him, and he makes him bow. He's just totally fucking with him. Uh, Harry tries to use Expelliarmus, but fails. And he's like, come on, what are you doing, dude? Don't, don't bring that fucking child's play shit here. Uh, after tonight, when people speak of you, they'll speak of only how you begged for death, and I, being a merciful lord, obliged. And he's just like talking all sorts of shit. Also, I'm going to take a step back here. He's talking shit, but his boys are behind him. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm gonna, we're going to fight you, but it's like, I'm not going to fight you. Your boy's behind you. No, like, it was, if I beat you down, Lucia's going to come out and beat all one, these guys At one down. point during the fight, someone, one of them in the background, you can hear him be like, he's oh, like, I got like, him. He's like, no, motherfucker, I got him. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, no one else, no one else, just us two. Because yeah. he uh, has to prove something. That's true. This uh, is the boy that lived. Of course, Harry... Uh, uh, Let's see, uh, Harry runs and hides as Voldemort, when Voldemort takes his attention off him, and he goes, don't turn your back on me. I want to look at you while I kill you. I want to see the light leave your eyes. And this is the point where Harry's like, you know what? Fuck it. I've got nothing else Dude, to lose right nothing now. Else to at lose. this moment, I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. I forgot. Like, this kid has fucking courage. He's got balls. Because, like, you see it, where he's just like, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm not going to go down hiding. Walks I'm going to get up. And fucking do a stupid little thing to fight back. No, walks out before he does that, and he looks at him. and He goes, "Have it your way." She's like a baller ass thing yeah. to say to someone who's you know is gonna kill you. Ninety nine point nine percent chance you're getting nuked this next scene. Uh, and they square off. Harry uses Expelliarmus. Uh, 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 Voldemort uses Avada Kedavra, and the streams get crossed, and literal white hot lava spits out of them. And I'll tell you this though, like Harry holds his own here. It goes like a little bit that way, and to the point where, to Kevin's point earlier, the followers are like. Yo, shit, dog, you want us to jump in? He's like, no, man, I got this. Like, nobody touches this kid but me. I got shit to prove here. But Harry's like, I almost got this. And then you're like, no, you don't. You don't got this. No, no, uh, no. Of course, the spirits from uh, from uh, uh, Voldemort's wand start popping out. There's all the spirits of the people he has killed previously uh, up to Which, this point. There's, there's one thing that doesn't make sense. Like, why does uh, Cedric come out of this? Because he was the last person killed. I th- presume that Wormtail wand. used his wand. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah, he was like, Wormtail's wand's wand. gone. Yeah. yeah. My wand. Give it to me. 
Okay. Uh, of course, right. uh, Harry is then uh, confronted by his mother and father who are like, Harry, you've done a great, listen, listen, son, bang up job up until this point. Yeah. Why don't you let us take care of this and you get the hell out of here? When we, We're going to take over for you. When we tell you, just get back to the port key and touch it and get back. And, and, eat, and you, eat your vegetables. And, and, you know, and yeah, then we yeah, get yeah, a yeah. heart wrenching, wrenching scene where fucking Cedric's like, yo, can you take my body back? Yeah. Please? please. To my dad? So wait, I would have been like this. Listen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like... Here's, I'm up against if, the wall if I, here. If Cedric. I don't, I hope you understand. Yeah, I, yeah, we'll come back for it. I know where it is. He like, knows. I'm that same kid that, you know, a couple movies ago, there was blood in the wall and everyone thought it was me. Yeah. And the other time, like, everyone I thought it was me. I heard you talking shit, dude. I heard you talking some yeah. shit. If I come back with your body, he like, knows it's not going to He knows Akio go now. He was all fine. He jumped down there. It was like, Akio trophy. Akio trophy. Uh, of course, the parents like, go. Just go now, and Harry's like, "Cool, I'm go, Aki, and it's cool." He smartly grabbed grabbed the body first, grabbed the trophy to him, and then boom, he's back. Bam, ba da da, ba da da, and everyone's like, "Harry, it's so great!" And Harry looks up, just crying with blood on his face, and then someone screams because they realize Cedric's dead. It's, isn't it Fleur that screams? Probably. Yeah. Uh, let's so I guess see. she was fine. Lord Didn't get Voldemort, even. and Voldemort is back. back. That's it. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Cedric's dad just loses his Oscar. shit at this point. It's and so yeah, sad. Cedric's dad's losing his shit. So and sad. they cut to a crowd shot that clearly they could have picked a better crowd shot because, like, I think Hermione looks kind of scared, and Ron's like, Ron doesn't I mean, know what's happening. That's all they have. Yeah. They, they, no they hit next, 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 next clip constantly. Yeah. yeah. And every like clip was just wrong. But the dad's reaction goddamn go for face. still gets so me. So yeah. sad. That's my boy. That's my boy. My boy. Uh, Moody goes, you don't have to be here, man. We got to get, we got to get you out of here. Takes him back up to the office and then starts acting all sort of weird. And he's like, what was it like? What was he like? The dark Lord. Being starts squeezing presence. his arm and shit. And he's like, what was it like being his, what, what, tell me everything about the grave. Blood? Yeah. He's yeah, like, he, he like squeezes it and he's like, tell me, tell me what it was like standing by his grave. And he's like, I didn't say anything about the grave. Did I? Oh shit. And then Harry's like, I'm gonna fuck this guy up. Doesn't matter. Dumbledore comes in to the rescue. Uh, Expelli Amas. Uh, and then, of course, uh, he's trying to drink his potion too, but there's nothing left. So he goes over to the other ones. There's nothing left. We know at this point that he's not who he seems to be. Uh, they expel him. They give him the Veritas. What is it? Veritas serum. Veritas serum. They're like, "Are you Alistair Moody?" He's like, "No." He's like, "Is Alistair Moody in the room?" And he looks over at the chest, and I was like, "Oh fuck, that's intense." And that's they open cool. it up, and I love that. I love the effect here because they do the thing, and it opens up, and they look down, and it's like two stories down. And he's like, "Ah, sorry, dude. I've been here for like a long time. He has not fed me, but..." A magic. I thought yeah. it was gonna be like the little, like a little chest opens up top, and he's like a little tiny baby. He's kept him alive because he needs him for the. He needs the hair yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's the delicious hair. And uh, information. And then they uh, they turn him back. He turns back into the none other than Barty Crouch Jr., who's been using the apologies potion. And then he's like, "Hey, Snape, I think we figured out who stole your shit." And Snape's like, "Yeah, no shit, dude. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm not done. Get it." Uh, the Dark Lord is back. The next day at the Great Hall, Dumbledore gives a nice eulogy for Cedric. Uh, the students have a right to know exactly how Cedric died. He was murdered by Lord. He straight up was murdered by Lord Voldemort. Uh, the Ministry of Magic doesn't want me to tell you this, but I I don't care. Uh, you deserve to know because uh, to not do so would be a disgrace to his memory. Uh, he tells everyone to remember the bonds of friendship they've forged this year. Remember that, and Cedric will not have died in vain. You remember that, and we'll celebrate a boy who was kind and honest, brave and true, right to the very end. Uh, and then Harry's like, I mean, I did all the work, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, Dumbledore comes to visit Harry in his dorm, and he apologizes for putting Harry in danger. Harry asks about the wand. He's like, at one point, my wand connected with Voldemort, and uh, uh, Dumbledore says, priori incantantum, which uh, apparently is something that happens when two wands chosen of the same feather hit. It can actually it can have a side effect, God. which is uh, that the last, it'll, it'll expel the last, uh, one of the last spells or curses that the other wand did, which is apparently what happened here. It was just like a leftover of what happens. It's a side effect of what happens when two wands cross. Barry, streams. do they go over that later in the one of the other books or movies? Uh, like what specifically? The, the, the spitting of the stuff. Yeah. Spells. No, they go over here. Okay. Um, but he sort is, of has one line about it. Yeah. yeah, and well, this, yeah like, in, the, in the books. And then uh, this. In the movies. And in the book here in this scene is where they confirm it's Fox the Phoenix who gave the uh, cores to both Harry's wand and oh, yeah? Voldemort's wand. Yeah. yeah. So they're of the same. It's an actual that. line from the book. Priori incantatum. Uh, and then he just goes, he's like, hey, man, I would like to tell you some nice things that are going to happen, but there's a lot of dark shit happening ahead of us. Uh, dark and difficult times lie ahead. Soon we must all face the choice between what. Is, uh, the choice between what is right and what is easy. But you have friends, you're not alone. 
Uh, basically, like, stick with your friends, anything's gonna be okay. Uh, it's the final day of school, and everyone is saying their goodbyes. Crumb tells Hermione to write. Uh, Fleur gives Ron a little kiss. Uh, Ron, Hermione, and Harry have one final moment together. Hermione asks everyone to, she's like, everyone's gonna write me. Uh, or she, she says, everything's going to change now, isn't it? And Harry's like, yep. It's all gonna change, because we've all had an awakening of sorts. Yeah, Cho Chang is single again. Uh, and then she, of course, makes them promise. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? right. <laughs> it's gonna go great for him with her being like, uh, this is totally distracted. God, her boyfriend, two Doug. chapters of the next book. It's oh, just Christ. like, come on, get uh, out of here. Her- Hermione, of course, makes them both promise to write uh, during the summer and runs as you know I won't. And then she looks what at Harry piece and Harry. Of shit. What Harry basically, piece- tongue in cheek, is like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna write every week. And then they all have a good laugh as they watch the students from the no Durmstrang laugh. Institute and the uh, Bo Batten's uh, Institute or whatever uh, fade away into the distance. That is the end of the movie. That is the end of the movie. It's good stuff, man. Wow, good stuff. Solid, Long solid one. stuff. Wow, nearly two uh, hours. Barrett, it's time for the Boss Baby Book Corner. <laughs> boss Baby Book Corner. Boss Baby. He read the books. Yeah, you Nailed came in the right What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Boss Baby's Book Corner, a podcast within a podcast where I share the most important details from the Harry Potter books that were cut from the movie. My name is Barrett Courtney, and this week we we're talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which comes in at 734 pages, Jesus. the biggest Jesus. jump from one uh, one book to the other, uh, with, with this movie being two hours and 37 minutes, like Tim said earlier. So naturally, there are a lot of cuts. Match. I'm going to try to get through some of these as fast as I can. Detail number one, in the movie, there is no Winky the house elf uh, who serves Barty Crouch Jr. and Sr., which cuts out the major storyline of Barty Crouch Jr. and how he got where he is. Barty was in Azkaban, but was snuck out by his father and dying mother. It was like her last, like, dying wish to, like, get him out of Azkaban. And Winky took care of Jr. and helped cover the whole thing up. Everyone believes Barty had died in Azkaban when really it was his mother who was regularly taking polyjuice potion to avoid detection. Hmm. Barty Crouch Jr. was under the Imperious Curse until uh, then one... Until one night, Voldemort and Wormtail, who had learned about Barty's escape, showed up at their house and put Barty Crouch Sr. under the Imperious Curse. Sr. missed several uh, tournament events, but Harry would see his name on the Marauder's Map in the middle of the night, when in reality he was seeing Barty Crouch Jr. walking around as moody. Uh, One night, Barty Crouch Sr. escaped uh, Voldemort's Imperious Curse and showed up at Hogwarts in a crazed state. Harry goes to get Dumbledore, but when uh, when they return, Crouch is missing. Near the end of the book, it's revealed that Junior killed his dad, transfigured him into a bone, and buried him in the front uh, in front of Hagrid's hut. This plot is threaded like throughout the story and helps add a Jeez. lot of the mystery element that is lacking, I would say lacking in this movie. Uh, detail number two. Uh, one of the biggest details, I would say, that's so big and one of the biggest differences, it's so big that it's become a meme in the Harry Potter uh, fan base is in the book, uh, after Harry's name gets pulled, uh, Dumbledore calmly asks, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? And then the movie is like, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Anyway, uh, detail number three, Rita Skeeter gets banned from Hogwarts grounds eventually for invading the students' pr- uh, personal and for lives. for all sorts of touchy-feely. But even Who? Rita Skeeter. Rita Skeeter. Oh. Uh, oh. But a- even after she is banned, she is still somehow getting stories and quotes from students. Mm. Eventually, Hermione finds out that she is an unre- unregistered animagus and comes to an understanding with Ske- uh, Skeeter that Hermione won't share her secret as long as she doesn't write another story ever again. She's like a beetle, and she sneaks onto campus and shit. She puts her in a small jar... Yeah. For like weeks. Yeah. And makes really the jar unbreakable so she can't turn back into a human. And mm-hmm. like at the end of the school year is like, I'll let you out, but if you start writing shit, I'm gonna let everyone know you're anime just Wow. Uh, yeah. Detail number three, the maze, which is the third task of the tournament, is way fucking cooler in the book. Yeah. They like they put I like hope. Uh, fucking um, bog arts and stuff into it where like Harry thinks they put Dementors he's like oh wait no you're a bog art and like figures things out blasted into Scrooge which are like these ugly looking fuckers that like just spit the fire at one Hagrid point he potentially made like created the yeah. blasted into Scrooge scr- uh, and then scr- at one point he runs Dwight? into a True. sphinx and like the he has to answer a riddle the and riddles. shit I'm yeah and, I'm but like uh, she says like if you don't answer it correctly like I will fuck you up and she's basically like you can walk away and like like if I ask you this and you walk away you're totally fine but if you answer it incorrectly like I will like fuck you up so anyway there's that uh, detailed number four since Karkaroff and Snape were both former Death Eaters they saw the signs of the Dark Mark burning more and more throughout the year the night Voldemort returned Karkaroff fled having betrayed so many Death Eaters in the past so yeah like he totally like fucks off and at the the end of the book they're like oh what are we gonna do without a, a leader of the school and the like, crumbs like I don't care uh, detail number five Barty Crouch Jr. is a living witness to Voldemort's uh, return and I'm not gonna get into like why this is important because they kind of save uh, themes and plot points here for the next movie so I'm not gonna get too into the the weeds but in the book Fudge brings a de, um, 
the Minister of uh, Magic, uh, Fudge, brings in a Dementor into Hogwarts when he hears that there is a Death Eater in the castle. The Dementor immediately gives Crouch the kiss, so Fudge never hears the uh, hears Crouch's testimony under Veritas Serum. Hmm. And uh, again, there's a lot of themes and plot points here that they save for the next movie. So all I'll say for this, uh, this detail is an important chapter uh, called The Parting of the Ways is Skipped. And uh, again, I, I just want to quote something here because it's one of my favorite quotes throughout the entire series. But I won't say who says it and who they say it to because, again, it's going to – future spoilers. If I can uh, guess, do I get a chocolate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. If your determination to shut your eyes will carry you as far as this, we have reached a parting of the ways. You must act as you see fit and I – I will act as I see fit. You, you uh, know who said that, right? I to who? I said it, yeah, of course. Um, and then detail number seven, Sirius Black returns to Hogwarts disguised uh, in his dog form the night Voldemort returns. When Dumbledore finds out what happens, he's quick to make sure everyone on the same side knows each other and that they can uh, work together. Dumbledore reveals Sirius to Mrs. Weasley and Snape and forces Snape and Sirius to recognize that they can't be enemies anymore. And then the final detail for this week it's is fat. that... Uh, there was prize money as well for, uh, for winning the Triwizard Tournament, but feeling so guilty with the death of Cedric because Harry was the one suge uh, suggesting, like, we'll pull it together. Uh, Harry didn't want the winnings. He tried to give it to Cedric's parents, but they refused. He ends up giving it to the Weasley twins who have been trying to invest in creating joke products as they dream to make their very own joke shop one day, like Zonko's. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this week's episode of Boss Baby's Co uh, Book Corner. Again, Boss this is, we're Book gonna get Corner. into, like, really long Long, uh, books and stuff so naturally I'm not going to be able to get to everything so leave your favorite details that I've missed in the comments below and while you're at it why don't you give this video a like share with your friends who love Harry Potter and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already I'll see you next week for another episode of Book Corner but until then Mos Morta thank you Barrett that was great yeah. and also um, I need somebody to go back to maybe again. like two minutes to when Barrett was talking and to take a screen grab of him because the way he was cut off was cutting his nose off and he looked like the Dark Lord. Like so, yeah. Baby V and the You loved it, dude. Baby you were having a great I, time. I was there. trying to get, I wanted to make sure you guys do, but I didn't want to call it out. We yeah. all saw it. So. The other question I had was Barrett and, and, or Kevin. He didn't, this is, he looks like that only now because he came back, right? No, no, he had started transforming yeah. throughout because he's done a bunch of dark magic. Okay, so, he, already, like, so by the time he went himself. to kill Harry, he kind of looked like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we're not entirely sure, ago. but like, yeah, okay. there were certain, probably like he had red eyes and shit. Okay. That's how I had red eyes. Um, oh, you made it. It's time for the Golden Snitches Get Stitches, the Cool Greg effect. Cool Greg, what you got for me? Bruh, y'all motherfuckers thought this was a game? He's back and he's killing kids. Yeah, I've dude. been told you about this shit. It's begun. <laughs> you fucking idiot. It's begun. He, it's begun. He's been telling you, dude. <laughs> Yo, this one was tight as fuck, man. I'm I'm all in. I'm all in. This was the first movie that it ended and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to wait a week. Like I need to know what happens, <laughs> man. This gets better from here on out. Um all right, the little it? haiku yeah. in review time. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in Tim, you're not singing along, man. You do it every time stop. usually. Matt Roebeck writes in, you, really as impressive. you can, to patreon.com slash kind of funny. We're two hours into this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! Hey, it's not your fault. It was a long movie. Uh, Matt Roebeck says, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Let's go. Um, Voldemort is back. Victor Crumb is a street shark. Batman at Hogwarts. Batman. I don't get it. No, get it uh, oh, I'm, Robert Pattinson. Uh, oh, very good. Very, Pattinson. very good. Chadwick says, Crumb from the World Cup. Put name puts names in a flaming cup. Lost try wizard cup. A lot of cups. A lot of cups. Too many cups. Too many, how many, cups. How, many, how many? But how many girls? Stop it! <sighs> Stop it! Oh, Fighting wombat <laughs> says Team Edward baby. Just ask Hermione to dance. Voldemort is back. Uh, Matt Edwards says Ron's now stuck thinking that Hermione and Crumb played hide the firebolt. Oh, Hide the Quidditch did. They cup. Probably did. Uh, I'm the best seeker in the world. Uh, you got a nice golden snitch. Too far. Right. FNH Paul says, time for the goblet. Ron hating on everyone. Hufflepuff still won. Yep, that uh, was Haiku uh, Review Hufflepuff's for this week. Hufflepuff's lost, right? And I know we're running really long, so let me just do this really quickly. Okay, yeah, I'll, get it, I'll get it over Go with. Ahead. That cup was looking fresh. The style is hotter. We're going to rank the hair of Harry Potter. Every part. This is the worst hair he's had. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's part bad. three. Azkaban easily number one. He's had the best. That was the best uh, cut that we had on yeah. Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I would rank it so far uh, three, two, one, four. 
Absolutely. Three, two, wow. one, His hair was hideous in this. Yeah. And it's like it's lo- it looks like they styled it poorly on purpose, but I'm like, what's the Dude, point of no, this? No, no, no. But when like, it gets most to that of, length, it's a little bit unruly. No, but most, with. most of the time it looks like whatever. It was just long. The scene at the very, very end where uh like I, I can't even think of the where, where yeah, they were. That, that where they were, he was over the dead body, right? It was just, no, 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 not even the dead body. It's like it was already light outside. I think like Dumbledore was already talking. It was like the funeral scene. There were like his hair was just like it a looked like they slapped Crazy. a wig. Yeah, a lot. yeah. A bad I kind of got that yeah. vibe too, but I, I didn't. That. I, I didn't get the wig scene. vibe throughout the whole movie. No, 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 no. Is it a wig? One scene. I don't know. No. Wigging out? Is it a wig? Uh. I don't know. We're hitting all of them. <laughs> Scarpino. No. I don't know. I think it's normal. I think it's natural. Because all the, I think, I think cool the director told them all just to grow their hair out. I think they all had just cool, unruly, like yeah, 70s yeah, style. Because even though it's what Ron wears is kind of is kind of, of that era. That like, like shirt in the beginning? That shirt. Yeah. And like, so a lot of the like wardrobe is kind of a little bit more of a throwback retro. So I think that was some of the production design behind it. Yeah. Now, the other question, Andy, is how bad was Voldemort in this? Finally bad guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. I am your host. Uh, I'm a rad guy talking bad guy with my co-host, Nick Scarpino. Yeah, How's it going, guy. man? The only other rad guy. How's it going, dude? Bad guys and rad guys. So, uh, yeah, we're mo- mainly uh, ranking the, you know, Voldemort is a huge role in this one now. Yep, but it's, He's, it's yep. Barty Crouch Finally Jr., Finally, right? but Barty, Barty Crouch Jr., and then maybe even Moody. like the evil, evil Mad-Eye evil movie, Moody. even though it wasn't really him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll say I'm saying, BCJ. Oh, I was confused. Uh, <laughs> M-E-M and Baby V and the Funky Bunch. We'll just say Baby V and the just Funky Baby Bunch. V <laughs> Baby V and the Funky Bunch. bunch. Fantastic. <laughs> Baby V and the Funky Bunch. Uh, what are we feeling? I'm feeling number one. Number one? Yeah, Ooh, doctor. I, I kind of agree because I do like they, all the twists and turns we've that got, they we've got, sort of took you through. Absolutely. We've got we've got a lot of espionage happening. We've got them setting the stage, scheming in the back, and then we've got when Baltimore comes back, boy, he does not disappoint. Just immediately orders the, the killing of an innocent teen. Uh, who was arguably the best looking one at Hogwarts just takes all takes that from all the girls right there uh, And then just wants to fuck with Harry who's a kid. This is terrifying Perfect. Oh my god. Easily number, number one. one. Yeah, so Baby V For and sure. Funky Bunch is number one. Number two is Sirius Dem- uh, Demo Tears. Number three is Tom Elvis, Judas Orvoldi. Number four, Hat Guy and Voldemort. Wow. Great. There you go. Now it's time to rank the Harry Potter universe. Currently, the rankings are as follows. Number one, Prisoner of Azkaban. Number two, Sorcerer's Stone. Number three, Chamber of Secrets. Where will this one go? Before we get to it, Cool Greg, can you get on shot mic real quick? Yeah. Uh, I forgot to ask you for your vote last week. Yeah. Uh, where, what, what would you say? Where would you put Prisoner of Azkaban? Number one. Okay, good. Cool. So we, we made the right calls here. I was worried. Um, but now it's time to, to rank this one. Anybody want to put out an argument? I'll put this uh, I'll say number one. Goblet of Fire? Hands down. I, I forgot how well paced and how well structured this movie is. And like the one, I would I would have put Prisoner above it because Prisoner is my favorite book. Were it not for the fact that we still get to the end of Prisoner and Dumbledore has to have the scene where he has to explain everything and like explain well the plot holes. And this is pretty tight. This is, uh, someone say tight. watertight. From start to finish. I mean, is it? There were a lot of moments where Tim is like, "What did that mean? Why didn't they explain that?" And yeah, I had those a lot moments of, too. A lot of people think Tim's really stupid. No, do we, I do, do think call there's Tim a lot of the Ron Weasley. Of our I do think there's a lot of things that they just expect you to Hermione. know. Just kidding. You're yeah. Hermione. You're Hermione. You're Hermione. You're Hermione. <laughs> we love yeah. you. Andy's clearly the Ron. Uh, I do think that uh, I, I like Prisoner of Azkaban more than this movie. Um, I, as we were going through the review, I was like, you know what? I actually do like this movie more than. Chamber of Secrets. I don't know if I like it more than Sorcerer's Stone. You know, I'll put it above Sorcerer's Stone. This goes number two for me. Ah, uh, you're you're crazy. This is number one. So like we start clear, number two. Huh? I don't think it's clear number I think one. It's a clear, I, I think, think it's a clear number twice one. Twice as good as Prisoner of Azkaban. Wow. Sounds wow. like a fucking. I, honestly, I'm saying no. like this reminds me a lot of the Mission Impossible movies yeah. where it's just like cool to Shit set up, real introduce the world, we're getting you know? this stuff, and like. Mission Impossible 3, it's like, all right, it was good. Just like Prisoner. But then we get to uh, uh, Ghost Nation. Wait, what Ghost is Protocol. it? Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol. Like, oh, shit. These, the, now it's actually a great movie. And that's what this was. I recall you not even liking that movie that I, much. And hey, so. I'm, I'm hoping it gets better. Wow. I'm hoping it gets better. Man, the standards on this guy. It's hey, so dude. high. It's so high. Rogue Don't Nation. Make this about high. Your I'm hoping French that we get some right? good Rogue Nation action in the <laughs> Harry Potter <laughs> universe. Oh, but yeah, I say it's number one. Easy. Cool, Greg. Where you at? Number one. Yes. All right. Well, let's vote then. <laughs> Who thinks it's better than Sorcerer's Stone? Raise your hand. We all raise our hands. Who thinks it's better than Prisoner of Azkaban? Raise your hand. Fucking Everyone coward. except for Andy Cortez raises his hand. Hey, man. Character development works both ways. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it sure does. Fucking so the, the ranking of the Harry Potter universe right now is number one. 
Uh, Goblet of Fire, number two. Prisoner of Azkaban, number three. Sorcerer's Stone, number four. Chamber of Secrets, fantastic for everybody. Um, something I forgot to do last week, I, I want to do an uh, update on uh, the points that are given out in the show. Mm -hmm. um, Ravenclaw is currently standing at 30 um, because 15 were taken away. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Dursley is at negative 5. Mm -hmm. uh, Gryffindor. Um, and then calling Gryffindor. Tim's team, whatever Slytherin. it is, Slytherin, Slytherin. Slytherin is yeah. in parentheses, uh, is at 15. So. Yeah, man. Man. A lot of, a lot of negative okay. 15s here. Yeah, we're... Uh, Oh yeah, no, no, I'm not at 15. I'm at negative 15. Oh, yeah, fuck, Tim, what he took mean? a lot away from me. I probably said some dumb shit. Um, until <laughs> next time, Wingardium Adiosa.